Good morning, everybody on the group. Uh, we're ready for our Saturday, uh, August 6th, Reign of Winter campaign. And uh, come here. As you can see, the mini GM is ready to roll. So be careful. Yes, she is so ready. Tell the players, hi, players. Hi, players. Are you going to be good to them or bad? Good to them. Good to them. So see, she'll be good to you guys today. Uh, we got everything set up here. It is ready to go. The party is now transported to a different land. They have put the items that were left for them by the pale or by the dark rider, the black rider, uh, and they are now transported in the hut to a different place. The last time we talked with the party, the party had talked to the ravens. And again, there were three ravens. There was an albino raven, a dark raven, and a lighter skin raven. All of them represented the different parts of a day and had different riddles. From these riddles, the party was able to get items to then get the amulets that they will so need in their adventure to go forth. And it has a symbol and a reminder of a clue for them when they go forth. They have been told about the place called Artosia. Artosia is supposedly where the Baba Yaga has erected three large edifices, a mother, a maiden, and a crone. And within those areas are supposedly more clues on how the party will move forward once they've gotten those clues to the next step of clues to get Baba Yaga back. So, spoiler alerts everywhere, folks. If you haven't even seen this, you've already got spoiled. No going forward. This whole session is going to be one big spoiler alert. Now, mind you, I change every one of my sessions for the players here, so they're not exactly like the book. So be very careful if you guys ever get the books and read them, because I tend to go a little bit off reservation. Uh, so this is not only for my players, but this is for anyone else who would watch and get entertainment out of this. Now, let me introduce who the players are. We have several different characters, very rich backgrounds. Uh, I will start this week with an odd one, Brian or Rothar the Paladin. Yes, Brian, this is the first time I have put you first in one of these videos, but it won't be the last. Uh, Rothar grew up in a monastery. It's a monastery north of Opara in the wooded areas. And this monastery was devoted to paladin orders and raising uh, fighting martial prowess as well as study. His parents were there as well. While he was training and growing in the monastery, he was approached by a deity, Caden Kayleen. And Caden Kayleen touched his life. And since then, he has been kind of a wild card oddball paladin for Caden. Uh, a little off the, weather, off the beaten path, he is a little sarcastic and sassy at times. A little bit... Um, less lawful than you would expect a paladin to be, but this is the fun of following a god that's chaotic good. You can do a little bit more. Please no murder hobos though, Brian. <laughs> we don't need any of those, but you haven't run him that way. Rothar has been an invaluable asset to the party. Since coming on board with the group when the group first formed to find out what was going on in Heldron, he has been nothing but an asset. He's gone through some hard times. He has died four, three times, and each time his god has intervened to bring him back. So we have not lost him yet, and thankfully he hasn't been close to the edge since. So that is Rothar, who Brian will be playing. Josh is playing Damien. Damien is an odd sort. He is a fey-blooded human from Opara. He grew up um, kind of carousing with the noble women and girls and has got a real penchant for lust. He is a very lusty and swarthy character. Uh, he's got the blonde hair thing going, so he's got everybody kind of wooed and ooed by him. Uh, he has a way of charming people, so he is... Uh, Sorcerer is a bit more of a charmer. Yes, there's offensive spells, but he prefers good words and little diplomacy over everything else. And that is the cool part about his uh, fabled sorcerer. Now, he has a way with Remily, who is the NPC, and he still kind of tugs at her heart, though he has flirted with many people, from Nadia Petska, the uh, contact that you first come up on in the, uh, the realms of Erisian, and she's a ranger. And a single mother, a uh, widowed mother. So he was able to connect with her, and as well as trying to connect with a Haldra, which was kind of interesting. Read up on a Haldra if you haven't read up, folks. They are an interesting kind of uh, uh, what I call forest mother or wood mother, uh, or wood wife. They're an interesting lot. 
So he uh, he has been out there and really trying to charm his way through things. Next comes Cal L. Cal L is a Asimar who has flight but no wings. So he floats just barely above the ground. He has a Falcata and he worships uh, one of the many imperial lords and his duty in life as he kind of saw it he grew up on the streets but was taken in by a priest of this imperial lord and he grew up with potential and the priest saw a lot of potential in him so Cal kind of was torn but went into the the order when the priest had an unfortunate accident and since then Cal has devoted his life to goodness and, and bringing good and beauty to the world and he does not uh, suffer evil at all uh, though he has been kind of nice with Greta he has been very open-minded with her but boy at times he goes a little bit off the rails with the chaotic neutrals and uh, gives them a hard time but Cal L is a loyal friend and a loyal leader in the party and he really wants what's best for the party's interest so that's Cal L so let's go next with Orin. Orin is a paladin, also an Azamar of Saren Ray. And as a paladin he of Saren Ray, he is one that has been drawn to healing. Why is that? Well, for many multiple reasons. So, um, ah, boy, hang on real quick and I'll go back to my diatribe. So he started out on a farm in, um, in uh, Taldor, which is a very... Um, old school realm and most of the characters are from there. Taldor looked them up on the inner sea. Taldor was the first colony of Aslanti survivors that came over when the Aslant Empire fell and fell into the ocean and went into ruin. So the Taldorans have a little bit of an attitude and a little bit of haughtiness. Well, not so with this Azamar. He grew up on a farm with a farming community, and unfortunately his father died, and his stepfather stepped in to take his place. And he grew really close to the stepfather, and the stepfather one day was attacked in the field by a were-creature, and he was seriously injured. He was unable to save and cure his father, and he, our stepfather, seen as father at that point, and then he, his... Um, stepfather went on a killing spree so he had to deal with things and and sadly he has always been haunted by that and he is looking for ways to try to cure things and cure people of what ails them because he could not do so for his stepfather who he loved very much he's a kind-hearted priest he does fight when necessary but he heals much more and tends to the party's needs and makes sure they stay alive uh, he is a witty person and and uses his wit and thought uh, to try to win people over and often he works well with our chaotic neutral rogue, which comes up next. Our rogue. Our rogue is um, Painvin, and Painvin, run by Max, really well job, by the way, one of his best run characters in my mind. Painvin comes from Keonan. No one knows what his um, ties are to the Keonan government, but some suspect. He is a proponent of nature and summer. He is a proponent of the summer fae. He is trying to keep Tree Razor from taking over more areas in Keonan, and he fears that the winter fae is going to help in that effort for the demons to take over his realm. So he uses deceit and guile and words and forgeries to make his way through things and try to defeat the enemies of Keonan and the summer. He is a, a somewhat loyal person. He loves Remily. He and Remily get along just famously being that she's Fay, And she's taking a shine to him because she likes his way of handling things. But never doubt that he will stab you in the back if he has to to get things done. Not his trademark, but boy, it's one of the ways he does handle things when diplomacy, bluff, and many other skills do not pay off. So, that takes us to our investigator. Ooh, dun, dun, da. He is brand new, a little OCD. Sorry, I'm off camera here, but I want to get this here. Um, and that is Thalo. Thalo is a Mwangi. He is a Mazali native who grew up in Rahadum. But over time and loss of his family sent him to an orphanage where he was, or in a monastery where he was raised. And he was moved to the area of um, Enduran, which is the land of freedom. And he believes very much in freedom and hates slavery. But he also is a little OCD when it comes to cataloging things and making 
things sure things are in their right place. He will figure things out. He is smart. He has much knowledge. And he, though he will use a weapon, it is not his preferred way of handling things. Though he can solve any crime or anything that goes on. And he is trying to solve what's going on and why he appeared in Baba Yaga's hut. And who is this strange party who he is helping now? And why are they trying to help Baba Yaga? Hmm. So, finally, Remily Fairhaven. Remily is the right hand to a dryad of the forest in Heldron, who is one of the many princesses in Taldor of the Fae. She is a smart-witted little chatty folk. She uses chat sometimes to disarm her foes. She is a swashbuckler. Never doubt her skills with the sword or the bow. She will lay you low quickly, and she is willing to stand in the way of, of the worst and largest monster to protect her friends. Fiercely loyal to the summer and fiercely hating of the winter, she will fight with fire to kindly set things right. She is a bit mirthful, a bit sarcastic, a bit fun, but she loves this party, never doubt that. And so you have our party of adventures. Today, there will be missing two people. Scott, who plays our, um, our uh, SMR war priest, Cal L, will not be here. And unfortunately, sadly, we're going to be missing Cliff, who just joined us. He's uh, a dad, and so he's got to do the dad duty of taking care of his daughters, and God bless him. I, I love him for it. He, uh, he's a loving dad who really cares about his girls, and I want to make sure he gets that time. So we'll miss you, my friend. We will miss you greatly, but do your duties and be dad. It's always most important. So in that setting, the party has come to this strange realm. They have talked to uh, a strange man who is at the front door. The, the hut changed on them when they went to the new location. Of course, they talked to the ravens, but they also talked to someone else. They talked to an Iobarian who is set here. After doing the Celtic knot of a triangle to get these clues and get the amulets, um, they left, actually at the time, Thalo talking with the man that guards the door. And he is a kind of an interesting gentleman. He supposedly was a warlord at one time in this empire. His name is Ratbor the Bold. And Ratbor talks like this with this accent. And he is Iobarian. And Iobarian have a bit of the Slav in them. And they are very interesting peoples. And so he has taken a shine to the party. But as he said, he says, I cannot let you in. My thing is to guard the hut. You may leave any time you like, but when you come back, I must kill you. But we wear the mantle. It does not matter. It is what it is. I was, I was tasked by the Baba, and so I will follow her order whether I want to or not. What we, can we do to help you? You can release me. Get the cookbook. She has a cookbook. And in this cookbook, you may free me from the curse that binds me here. And maybe I will follow you and help you in your quests. So that's Ratbor. They're in a supply room and kind of the front of the hut, but they have not made it out of the hut yet. So today they venture forth in the hut. Are they in Iobaria? Supposedly Ratbor has said they are. Iobaria is a strange realm. Iobaria is a realm of old. It lies north of Bravoy, which is a, a kind of a Varician scald empire that is in that empire area. And not so much scald, but it is a um, orphan. The Ulfin are the Skalds or the Nords. And so they must go forth. He, they, he says that they're in the Devesda marshes. Devesda marshes. And so the Devesda marshes are supposedly where they are. And they must see if they go north to find Artosia and the area of Baba Yaga's three mother, the three, the mother maiden crone. Is it there? And what else? And what other secrets lie in this empire? Per Ratbor, Bor, Kastaki was born here. Kastaki used to be a uh, warlord of the Iobarian people, but he was greedy and he was very avarice in what he wanted to take over. And in his desire to unify the clans under him in the different cities, he went to Baba Yaga and boldly asked of her mother, give me what I want. Give me this realm. And she said, fine. You want this realm? I'll give it to you. And she turned him into a frost giant. 
And so ever since in his bitterness, he and his followers, frost giants, have hated the Baba and her followers. They have slain viciously and kill Iobarians and drink their very blood. They are a bloodthirsty lot, and a demon lord is he, and he has a realm in the many 666 layers of ice that he rules with an iron hand. So, from this time, there have been many plagues per Rat Bull that have decimated the, the once prominent people of the area. It has taken cities that were fifties and hundreds of thousands and turned them into tens of thousands. There were many plagues, not just one that swarm the land and it seemed like ever so often when the people would come into these cities that these plagues would destroy them. There was even a plague of the dragons that came through and slew many of the dragons that are in this area. But there is still an angry ancient blue that roams the realm. And never doubt that this blue has the greed and kept the other ones down to keep his realm. The name of this blue, you ask? Well... That's an interesting thing, said Ratbolt. Let me tell you the name of this one. It is Shavornor, the evil. Shavornor is a nasty piece of work. And he flies through the sky, raining his lightning down and destroying all that sits in his path. This great, actually, I'm sorry, not a, not a blue, my friends. He's a white. Shavornor the white. He is a white dragon, though there are blues here as well, and many other type of things in the cold. So, all right, this is where we are, and I wanted to recap a little bit before it starts. Now, I'm going to have the camera going the other way. I know you guys like to see my smiling face. Ooh. Sorry, guys. Sorry, honey. Sorry, players. Sorry, kit. Sorry the rest of you guys. You get to see me move around the table, but you won't get aimed at me. Sorry, tiny DM. Sorry, Da Queen. I'm not going to put it facing me, but I'm going to face out because there's better things. Let me show you. As we switch the camera, by the way, all my DM supplies, my shield, there is the rest of the things over here. And as we go out and <gasps> wait, it's a mini GM. Say hi, mini GM. Hi. That's mini G. She will be out there wowing the crowd as you guys watch. And as you guys catch up on the adventure today, Mini GM, my mighty mini. Um, actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put it on my screen. And I hope all of you will appreciate it. All right. So I'm going to point this out a little bit. Maybe my screen will let me get the whole place. There we go. And so when they come, you will have a shot of the whole thing. So I'm going to pause it until then. And soon starts the reign of winter. Iobari. From each of the ravens, right. One amulet from each of the ravens, and there was three of them. Right. One, one of them says we need to find a something gold. Right. And um, the way I understood it, um, we use the, uh, the the mask and the, the feather token, or whatever, into the cauldron. Now you use the mask, and then remember there was some beard here. Beard yeah. hair, that was it. The two went into the cauldron. The cauldron, the we bubbles. spun them, and then you guys ended and up then there. and then it was like, oh, things are different now inside yes. the hut. And everything went out of the cauldron somewhere else. Now you got a hint from um, your lovely house uh, Zorka servant Zorka. She kind of hinted that these go back up onto cups and cupboards, which. If you guys took a little bit of time, you guys did notice above Baba Yaga's area in the kitchen, <coughs> there are cu cubby holes with different things in, as well yeah. as down into in the um, the cellar where you found Cliff doing his little cleaning exercise. So, all See, that going on, you guys were able to figure out that maybe there's other items even in here that you guys haven't thrown in the cauldron that may take you somewhere else, but. If you do, you'll lose out possibly on what is here. And that's what has, I think maybe kept you guys from doing that. So, um, yeah, it's kind of the whole... Uh, well, we have this mantle for Baba Yaga. And I think the idea is, is that we're supposed to follow wherever these things are leading us. Yes, you are. And the mantle, Bob, the mantle of Baba Yaga... Um, let's see, no updates, great. 
I should have done this beforehand. Yeah, it's okay. Carol Ann you have, always you have time. Yeah, I know. I did that. I did that yesterday. They did that because, and Kim got me it, the uh, Horror Adventures. And the Horror Adventures just came out yesterday at, um, well, actually the day before at uh, the lovely um, Gen Con that's out going on, which, by the way, Paizo got five awards. They got five Ennies. They got, for the Beast Sherry, five for their, they got a gold for that. They got a gold for Weeby Goblins, two which is the giant um, uh, tower, I guess, now. It's a free adventure. They got something for that. Um, on the uh, the one where I got this big golem up here, they got one for that, the Rusty Dragon Inn. Uh, which, oh, by from, the way, from what, Gen Con? Yeah, from Gen Con, the Ennies. Yeah. Remember, Ennies are heavily, usually Wizards of the Coast in D&D. &D. The Ennies this year, they got five for Paizo because Wizards didn't show up. Wizards quit going to Gen Con. And oh. I think they're going to quit for the next three or four years, which means Paizo's going to dominate. Oh, he sent me he sent me uh, Cal's character sheet. Good. Yay. Do me a favor. Forward it over to me when you get a chance. Well, he sent me the URL. And it's really? like... Why is he doing that? Why not just send you the... Rare? It's a Dropbox URL. Uh, all right. Well, when you get the rare, do me a favor. Send me a PDF of it. Just I mean, I can send you the portfolio file if you want. That's fine if you want to do that. I just I don't know whether or not your your licensing has enough. Oh, I've got everything. I'm up to date. You got everything? I've got everything except for three things, which means I will probably ping on your guys is because you guys probably don't have enough. I've got well, like I don't so know. The much. only thing that we didn't have was uh, the intrigue stuff, and he, I think uh, I have that. Well, it's like there was like a 2016 bundle. I got the Unchained And recently. I think he's going to buy that. He, he was going to do it yesterday, and then he said he's going to do it later. I got uh, I got Beast Ray 5, Unchained, and a couple others. So, I mean, uh, there's Horror Adventures is still grayed out. So oh, it's, like, it's going to be unbelievable. Well, what they're doing, let me, let me give you a preview of what's coming. This is kind of cool. So number one, they're going to have an adventure path called Strange Aeons. That's Call of Cthulhu. 100% think Call of Cthulhu. Remember uh -huh. the Carrying Crown? You remember the fourth adventure in the Carrying Crown where you guys went into Thrushmore and had all that weirdness? Now they're doing a whole path in that area mm. on that. So one whole path, that's the whole one. And I subscribe, by the way, to Adventure Pass. And the reason is it's 30% off book price and you get the PDF free, which is basically a $27 savings on every book. Um, so I was bored. I built my character from uh, when I was playing in the... Okay. 70s and 80s. Really? From AD&D. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I go, okay, based on what he did, the, and AD&D didn't have it, the equivalent right. of a kineticist, because he basically, be, he, he was a pyromaniac. He was right. a fighter magic user, but all his magic was fire-based. Okay, so you're doing a pyrokineticist then. So, yeah, so but he was already max-level fighter, max-level wizard. Right. So I also made him a max-level pyrokineticist. That so awesome. that's but but that's sixty levels. I know that's that. This one and I go. Support it. <laughs> no, this will. I did it. it. I did it yesterday just to sit there and find out if I could, you and it will. It work. lets you. Oh lord! I said starting level, and I go yeah. sixty, and I go, dang, it lets me do it. <laughs> ah, so who has joined us? Tis I. Tis you, Josh. Josh. Hello. Hey. So I was telling. Uh, Paul, you won't have to listen to the screaming today because she has now been successfully going potty on the potty for about six days almost. That sounds like good, happy success. <laughs> oh, yes. We, yesterday we went five times in one day. I'm like, yes. So you don't want us to play Cliff's character too, right? Yes. Why don't we do that as well? I can well, do that um, because oh, I, yeah. have, I have his character <laughs> sheet because I built his character sheet. Uh. Hey, Janet, did you go get Dee Dee's cell phone from the bathroom? Go get it real quick. Run get it from my mom's and Dee Dee's room. My cell phone. So I am taping this. This is up and going for you guys. That way then everybody can have the <coughs> playback that isn't here. So we need to stop watch for another. She's got another 21 minutes before she has to go in there. And that's how we're kind of doing it. We time her every 30 minutes go in and then she's really successful that way otherwise she just does not do well um, did you yes it's making some weird noise 
Uh oh. So I'm gonna have to go back there, huh? So we have to find something gold, and then we have to find something yeah. that's based on that type phrasma-like symbol. Yeah. And, and, and I, I made, think that's it. And I made one mistake with what Ratbor told you. Sabor the uh, Sabor the um, the dragon is not a blue. It's an ancient white. Sabor is an ancient white that survived up in the mountains. Oh, okay. This is the crisp, fresh new one that Kim got me of the horror adventures that has fear, all kinds of things like it. It basically puts some of Call of Cthulhu into the game system. It's going to be real good for Strange Aeons. Now, I told you about that pathball, and Josh, you didn't hear about that. Strange Aeons is coming out in September. I resubscribed to the adventure. Well, I don't know if I have one. Or Strange Aeons is basically Call of Cthulhu. Take where we were with the Carrying Crown, you came in after they were in Thrushmore after that whole thing. Um, it's going back to there. So it's going to the old gods again, or the gods of the Dark Vale. And it's a whole adventure around it with all the different gods of the Dark Vale getting involved. So Shub Niggereth and the whole things. Azathoth and all the different ones they have are going to make you little guest appearances, at least in shrines and other things. So after that, they're doing an all-Hobgoblin Empire campaign. Yes, Paul, an all-Hobgoblin Empire campaign. Cool. And it's, uh, it's I don't know if you're going to play Hobgoblins or what, but this is the one that's going to be over in Tien Sia, over in the other world, the other side of the world. Then after that, which really has got me excited, they finally are doing it. Return to Aslant. They are going to send the party out to the Aslanti Island ruins, or what's left. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am excited beyond all belief. Because I said, if that happens, you know what's going to go on. It's just going to go nutty or fruitcake, and you're going to have epic. You're going to have basic, basic mythic characters going on. Because you're going into Aslant. How could you not? Documents here on that portfolio. Okay. So, so that's all the craziness. Let's do this a little better so I can get everybody all right. Uh, move it. That's the only problem with the pan camera is that I can only get so much of everybody. Hopefully. kal -El. Okay, here we go. All right, so you got kal -El. Good. So I have Orin. Okay. I have Thalo. Good. And what? 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 Oh, look at you. New panties. It's exciting. She sat on the potty once and she's got her panties on. Okay. Any okay. tinkle? Uh, no. She said Dee Dee away. Go, Dee Dee, go. I bought these. Get her off the sippies. Good. <coughs> That'll work. Those men make real ones. All right, so, let's see. Let's see what this character has in it. Hello. Yay. Okay. And a laundry hamper for you. <coughs> That'll work. So oh, wow. Can... He's got stuff in here I don't okay, have. So just know the Monsters of Shadow Plane, Shadow Plane Gazette, Shadow Plane Player's Companion, Shadow Fall Temple of Orcus. Is Max coming? Yeah, he's going to be coming. Okay. Oh. oh, yeah. I was hoping there was only two in here because I'm going, otherwise somebody's car is invisible. Uh, you never know. I always know Paul because it has the Air Force. We, ha we, have in it, we have those kind of things. We have invisible stuff. Not in real world. You never know. So, um... Make your materials invisible to, I think, microwaves now. I know, right? It's scary. Yeah. It's scary what we can do. Well, what well, I was micro, Well, microwaves and radio waves, if you count stealth technology. Well, wait. It's coming, and you guys will see it in your lifetime. We'll be able to take your head and transplant it onto another body if you have the money. 
It's about one year out. It's it's actually already been done to a limited extent. I mean, yeah, just with Reese's monkeys really survived. And, wow. Because I know that they've transplanted a head from one Reese's penalty. monkey to the next, but they haven't been able to do like the spinal connections so that the so the uh, the new head the head on the new body was paralyzed from the neck down essentially, but it was able to wake up, revived, and I think it survived for a while. So they actually. I think they've now done with a human as well. She said it's so dumb. So, what is... <clears throat> what's going on? What's up, See, buddy? Well, it's like, he has to sit there and take exotic weapon proficiency falcata. <clears throat> Let's see whether or not he has... No, he has a buckler, because he's wow, still doing yeah. two-handed. You don't want to know how much this costs. Are we going to be able to make a car payment? Yes. Okay, that's all. I used about. the credit card that I just paid. All right. You wanted it because the only other one. Well, was yeah, she was <laughs> opening the the oven while it was on. The that only is other not one was the little thing. wooden ones that you you know the old. Yeah. 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 Basically, she, she would have stepped over that. Basically, she scared the crap out of me the other day. So she opened a the hot alarm oven. the alarm goes off for her nuggets. She races up before I can get up from here and starts opening the oven, the 400-degree oven. And I'm going, oh, no. And I grabbed it so quickly and pulled her away. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. can't happen. It's kind of what it was going. So I'm this going, is the only other one. It was 45 bucks, but it's an extra tall gate that's 36 inches. Wave to the party. There are yes, we are taping the session for the party's sake. I get because for the two how, is, be how is his weapon? He must have some kind of keying mechanism. Yes. I'm going to go through that whole Wait. thing. Oh, Minnie's on there at least twice. She makes guest appearances twice. Well, then twice. it's not going to be going up. Hi, say hi, hi Minnie GM. Hi, Minnie GM. <laughs> it's not going up. Period. No. I would share it with a limited no. amount of people, but no. that would no. never go up on No yet. one's getting shared it. Wait. She does not. I don't want her on the internet. Not videos. Wait. Wait. What? What? <laughs> uh, I'm going to, but that means Cole's going to have one heck of a time getting in the kitchen. I like the. Don't horror. worry about it right yet. I like the horror race rules in this. Mm -hmm. Very, very subtle. Very. It's going to be fun. Trivial. I can't wait to I read like through this. all of it, especially as we get to that. And I may use that in Mummy's Mask. You know what? One thing I'd like to see, though, is like full rules, because I mean it's it's kind of a minor rule in and of itself, but the I, kind of the idea of like uh, resurrection spell spells mm -hmm. working, but you know when they come back they're not quite right. Oh, you could probably do it. I like that idea. I, I've seen it done, but it's always been house rules. I think uh, one of the official supplements, maybe the one from three point five, has kind of mentioned it, but not any like anything concrete for it. Oh, and See, I, I think using the sanity rules that they have in there, and then automatically doing a roll for how much sanity lost. If it's like a two or three points, their experience they don't remember much. But the, the higher the roll of sanity loss, mm -hmm. the more they remember and the more horrific the experience. Yes. I got uh, two more packs of hot dogs. Okay, no problem. Oh, is Adam Einstein extend the uh, the threat range by double? No. No. Where, no. How do I understand? It just how allows the weapon to penetrate. It, it as allows to penetrate. Yeah, it's got its doubling. The <laughs> he threat must have something ball. else. Well, no, there's something. The, the look weapon at, look says. Look at his feet. Look at his feet. Because he might, might have, have an extended he might reach. Have, he might have improved crit. The weapon yeah. might be keen. Yes, he does have a keen, and it is extended keen? because of that. He Where does, is his keen? He has a, it should be on there. He has a keen. You don't weapon. need to hug everybody. He has a keen falcata. If he has no, it weapon, doesn't say it's keen. And then he should have put it on there. Yeah, him. but the thing is, the weapon shows up in Hero Lab. is 17 to 20 as a oh. spare. Well, adamantine gives you a little bit better threat range on a critical. It, it doesn't. It doesn't? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. No. Uh, what hey, is what it used to do in 3.0 was that it led, uh, basically gave a weapon a basic enhancement of like plus one or plus two or something like that. But since this of 20 or lower, okay. it doesn't do anything else as far as like it doesn't make it a better. It has a, it has a hardness of 20 itself. Um, I, just, I think it might be. Hard. I'm just I'm looking at Hero Labs right. description of. It bypasses hardness less than 20. Uh, yeah. They're ignoring hardness less than 20. 
So for it to sit there and, and have the hardness effect, it has to be at least 21. Which actually brings me to a point. If you don't have one, you should probably get an adamantine dagger at some point in time. Because even though I know that you're really good at probably breaking out of stuff, you know, nothing, sa nothing says uh, breaking out breaking out like just... Oh yeah, these small what, little honey? bars of whipping out an anime and dagger just cutting through cutting no, through metal bars like not water. easily. She'll try, <laughs> but that's how tall it is. Anyway, he I got the horror book. Oh boy. Yes, I got the horror book. Well, and and I said because of all the stuff coming out, the two of the paths are coming out. One is strange aeons. Do you remember Max when you guys were in uh, Carrying Crown yes, and Rushmore, and you were out there with the Dagon cult that was out there? Well, here's what we need. A Guess witch what? Killer. They're 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 revisiting that Hyper area. Slayer, my favorite hybrid class. Yeah. See, they're they're revisiting that, and now these rules are going to help with that. They're going to do a whole Call of Cthulhu esque Carrion Crown Ustalav campaign. You know, another thing of of it. Okay, the 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 thing about coming back wrong. I think there was a couple of other things that it did. Mentioning. Um, Coming That's back, coming back that. with some memories that were, you know, leave a bad experience. I think I remember that one in particular, right. just like what you said. Another one being like they come back possibly even possessed. Another one being, it wasn't mentioned on there, but it was that kind of an idea I, I've had of like, you know, probably possibly borrowing something from Full Metal no, Alchemist. Which is, oh yeah, you're, you're talking about coming back with the, what, what are they, the homunculuses or the homunculi yeah. that are there? Yeah, they have a little weird tint to them or bend to them because of that. But the Edward Edward Elric and that whole if you bring them back, they don't come back right vibe. Oh yeah. I love that. Alright, let's see if this will work. Because this will work better. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. We're, we're able to get through it. Yes, I was able to get through some of it. I didn't get it through as much as I'd liked. There. Let's get uh I think it gets a good swatch of everybody at the table. There you go. So That's I can see now the done. back of Max's head. I can see the side <laughs> of Paul's head. I can see Mini GM over there. You're just at the angle that I'll catch you now and then. Probably, as you, yeah, as you lean over, I'll catch more. But unfortunately, this doesn't have the pan, you know, 180 type of view that I would love to get in one of these. But it's still a good camera. That's fine. I've seen online a couple of other people who do their sessions online like that. Something it has to be about the same. Everyone seems to have some dealing with that kind of thing. Well, and I got rave reviews in the last one. Unfortunately, the one I did of you guys facing out on this was horrific. It, it When it was done, it was 13.6 gigabytes. So I said, I will never use an Apple iPad camera again. Because you need compression stuff. And like in this, I'm using MCH, which has compression, which makes it so much smaller. So I can do three hours on here, and it'll come up to maybe 500 megabyte, where this would be the 13.6. And so 13. it just doesn't. 13.6 gigabytes? Yeah, out. it has no compression at all. Have you fiddled with the, the quality of the camera on it? You might be able to switch it to a lower quality. I, yeah, i got to maybe see about that because I have on there what I do have. I have um, now that Microsoft Picks. I like it, by the way, because it takes the burst shots. So if I were to take a shot of you guys at the table, it'll do a burst, and it'll pick the best one. So I'll give you a for instance. Let's see if I can get everybody and show you. Um, there we go, Microsoft. And let's see. Oh, that's what it is. He needs to take that off. What? So, smile, everybody. Smile, Max. He had to check to where he was automatically. I guess. Maybe that's what he wants. All right, so yeah, it's going wants. through. It's thinking down here. And then it does this. Let's see. So, this is what it got. Pass it around. But it's, it got the whole... And what it does is it, is it takes multiple picks, and it takes the best part of each one, and then integrates it. So the burst does multiples to get all you guys in those action shots, and I love it because it does that. Whereas the old camera, if you've ever tried to use the camera on this thing, it's horrific. But one thing I say to Apple, Apple stinks when it comes to their cameras. Worst cameras. Now, I don't have their latest phone. I hear their latest phone is better. 
That's why. But Samsung supposedly does the best camera. <clears throat> Come on now. I can agree with that. that. And, and I'll take it. I mean, next time I may not go with a Microsoft phone, even though I use the tunes that Kim got, I may go with something else. So, okay, so I got everything out there. I got the cards here. I've got other cards here for the things. As I was saying, Max, to everybody else, it is you, Brian, Josh, and Paul this week. Cliff is missing because he's got his daughters. And so if we can switch it uh, to the fourth weekend this month, which I think will cover your travel, right? This month, or is it Brian? Uh, I will be out of the state from the 14th to the 28th. That's the time I took off from work, and I'm sure okay. I have to start right when I get back. All right, so the 28th is what? A... It's not the weekend. I know oh, that. The weekend's, I think, it's 30th. I'm pretty sure it is. No wonder he does now, that. I did that in the hopes I could catch you in there on that fourth weekend and we wouldn't lose anything, and then we'll go to the second weekend on the next weekend. <coughs> okay. Now, I do know, Max, you'll have one weekend that you've got to be out of there because of the Purdue game. Yeah, well, go that's, boilers. that's still tentative. Spoiler up. That's still tentative. Spoiler up. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do it. And then, and then the I think... The 28th is on the Sunday, uh, the last Sunday of the month. Okay, so I will miss you on that one. All right, so we'll have you missing. That's all right. Send me Damien. Because what I can always do is if you give me the, like a PDF version of Damien, mm -hmm. then I can have either him run them or I can have Max run them while you're gone. That way you don't lose experience. I love your sure. trigger sauce. Right yes, now. little trigger. Little but like I said, it could have been worse. You could have gone to Illinois or Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah, I can't forbid if you'd have gone to Notre Dame. My parents would have loved him. But I yeah. use them on I use them on a TXT format so I can no, rejigger them to be you know smaller and easier to look through. Okay. Could we actually? I wonder if you are available on that via yeah. Skype. Maybe we Skype you and Scotty. I think we can do a Skype conference, can't we, Paul? Or we have both of them there. Yeah, but you can't do video on both. Okay. The other part of the problem is, is that since that Saturday would be 27th, because I'm not I'm not flying there. I'm oh, driving. you're driving soon. No, yeah, you wouldn't be able to do that. All right. Where are you headed, by the way, for two weeks? North Carolina. Oh. Actually, South Carolina. I'm no, visiting my grandparents. What, that, what part of South Carolina? Um, is it like Columbia area, or is it uh, more, more, more Greensboro? Or what is it, not Greensboro? Greenville? Where there's Greenville? I have my grandparents' address, but I'm not exactly. I know it's not in any like major city or anything like More that. The beach area, out, like out towards the beach. Uh, maybe. I don't, honestly, I have no idea. If you're going out that way, it's beautiful. Um, I'm sure that they would probably live fairly close to where they used to live in North Carolina, because they used to live like not too terribly far oh, from the border. So you're, you're right on where Charlotte is. So there's the Charlotte border then, that goes over and kind of then becomes South Carolina on the other side, the different city. Leave it alone! Yeah, because I mean, they were, they were kind of at a part to where they weren't too far from, they probably not too far from Myrtle Beach, because that's where we used to go. And Myrtle North Beach Carolina. is gorgeous. Good God, that's, that's yeah. just beautiful there. And then they have Wilmington. Oh, I know where you got. They are. They're near the Wilmington Beach, Myrtle Beach area because right at the border, Myrtle Beach is like thirty miles, thirty-five miles south of Wilmington. Yeah, that's, and then Wilmington's Wilmington right is there. there. Yeah, Wilmington is actually where they used to live. Oh, okay. they said that they had moved somewhere in South Carolina, so I assume they just moved just over south. the border. Yeah, you Probably. get that, you get the benefit of both beaches. Good Lord, you're going to be spoiled now. You can have both white skin it's, beaches. It's my grandparents, so you know they're going to, you know, spo this spoiling is Yeah, yeah I was going to say, you're going to have a good time. You're going to go out there and have a blast. I love the Carolinas. It's gorgeous. I said to Kim, if I had another place that I wanted to live outside of Texas, the Carolinas would be it. I'd either in, well, where I'd love to live uh, is up towards the, up towards um, the mountain area. Of North Carolina. Hell no. It's almost going in. Hell no. Why? I'm not living where I'm going to get my rear end snowed in for months at end. Oh, we wouldn't. There's a town just south of there that's known for its golf if courses. You know, if you don't actually live in the mountains, it's actually a lot like living in Texas. I've been there during the summer. It's where? It's not quite as brutal as Texas, but it's, it's a lot stormy. like Texas. Yeah. But you can go up into the mountains. They got class. Three and four rapids up there that you can go to. They got the waterfall, honey. Remember the waterfall I showed you from 
uh, last of the Mohicans, that huge waterfall. Yeah, yes. South Carolina. That's right there in, in Carolina, North Carolina. There's a lot of places in South, because I've, I've read online a number of places that South Carolina is like one of the underappreciated tourist attractions in the United States yeah, because of its natural landscape. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot also, of Also, if I remember correctly, the taxes are better in South Carolina than in the North. I imagine South Carolina is one of those Republican strongholds. So I imagine the tax, the tax is there. I yeah. love South Carolina, but the, the capital is as backwards as backwards can be. Now, you get to the east, to the west, it's very progressive. You get towards the beaches, it's very progressive. But right there near Columbia and some of that area, there is hill jack, as they come, as I call them. They're, they're backwoods, hillbilly, white supremacist nuts. And, and, then, and, and then you go to Charleston and those areas, and it is just the exact opposite. I think they did this one with the old horror books, too. They just, on the back, they just put, like, a pretty much just a list of... Oh, look the at these inspirations. Movies. Yeah, I love the... This is going to be a lot of fun. They did a great job on this, and, you know, I'm looking forward to reading it cover to cover. There's only one reason we would move to North Carolina. Why is that? Because I know that there's a lot that I haven't seen that's really good. Well, that's the other thing I'm thinking. Because eventually, if they don't hire in my company somebody for the southeast, northeast, I move there, I can do the business out there, and the company would love it because I'm closer to them. And the flight's in or into. I don't think Joe will care. I wouldn't mind seeing more more of these types of movies. Event Horizon is one of my Let's favorite movies. Let's put it this way. This is safer. At least that we can have it out in front of the darkness. One thing is we have to keep the next steps for that. I agree. I agree. So what do you think of this? This was kind of a Celtic adventure. Well, in their dark, well, they definitely know what they're talking about because in their section for a dark fantasy film and television, they mentioned two of the Evil Dead movies and Game of Thrones and Pan's Labyrinth. So, do they have do they have strange, um, Stranger Things in there or not? Uh, no, it doesn't. Look oh Lord, have you guys seen anything on Stranger Things? Um, yes, no, maybe. I think I've heard of it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch it soon. You are going to watch it. It is 1980s, early 1980s. D&D &D with 12-year-old kids, and one of the kids goes missing. So lots of demo gorgon, lots of, what do they call it, the, the shadow... The Shadow Woods, or the Shadow Forest, or the Realm of Shadows, or the Forest of Shadows. It's, remember that old one where it was the Shadow Play, but it was the D&D &D version in an original, old D&D. &D. Again, it, it is X-Files meets small town 80s kitsch meets D&D. &D. And it's only eight episodes, and I'm through six or eight, and I am just, like, in awe of it. I love it. One other movie I wanted to see, and I just saw a thing about it recently, but I can't for the life of me remember what the which name one it was. So, honey, it's time for her to go sit if you it's want. It's about a. When you get a minute. Uh, it's about a man who discovers that he had a kid and the kid's like deformed, and it's this, uh, and it's wrapped in this thing, and it has this deformed face in it. Uh, and uh, the star of it is kind of a big guy, and he has this like weird, poofed poof out hair. The whole movie's in black and white. Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember what the name of it is. There's some really good. There's some real good ones that I want to see that are... I want to see video drone too. They, they got a new one coming out with Stephen Lang. That's, uh, um, what is it? Um, something about me silent or, or whatever. And, and, and he's a blind guy. And these kids are thinking they're going to go pick on him. And he ends up putting them through this hack slasher. I'm going to cut you up type of experience. So it's, they said it's one of the best horror films in a long time, so we'll see. I don't always trust the critics on their horror films, because right. so some of them just generally are. Where did that horrible. come from? I, I know why it has the advantage, the extended uh, threat range. Okay. <clears throat> He's got a spell adjustment, keen edge, applied to his Falcata. Ah, that's what it is. But where is this spell coming from? It probably is spell list. Well, no, I checked his spell. No, no, no. Remember, matter. remember, you guys got one of the oddities from the shopkeeper from the Chelish Empire, and he was in in Arisian, and he said, "I can give your Falcata." Either you want to look at this. You guys, either one. No, right now. No, right now. 
But um, remember, he said to you guys, I want, uh, I can help you guys out there and give you guys this and trade, and I think that's what he did. What he did tried he do? To prove it. He got a keen edge on his Falcata because it was a masterwork Falcata, and he wanted it done by the shopkeeper, the cellist shopkeeper. Who you right. guys are I'll, I'll just put that in. Cellist Shop. shopkeeper. And that spell is permanently on there. And yeah, we'll see. He shouldn't say 10 minutes per level. No, it's he should permanent. say permanent. Permanent. That's just fine because now it makes sense. Yes. If he ever gets to spell it, you might want to remember remind him of that. I will because I think he forgot it himself. Well, and the thing is, is that he's also got an attack bonus of plus five, untyped bonus that he's got an adjustment on. Well, this is I don't where, remember where that came from. This is where I'm going to rely on you guys to kind of sort through it because. Well, this is the first time I've seen I, his, his portfolio. So I know sometimes people get mad that I think you and Brian or you and Brian chime in on the rules, but I appreciate you guys doing it because right. there are little nuances that. Well, the other thing, the other thing we need to do is he needs to uncheck like Bears Endurance. That's not permanent, is it? No, That's Bears Endurance. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I right. have to take off all the things that he's got added on except for the keen edge. Okay. Now, I don't know where this attack bonus comes from. Is that like uh, divine? Well, I don't know where that comes from. He's got it as a permanent it adjustment. Might be a class feature. I know you have to no, no, he, he specifically added it. Nah, he specifically see. said other adjustments, attack bonus plus he, five. He's got a... This, this is the one gripe, and, and I'll say to any of you guys. Yes! She did it. Yay! Big class How does Tori have? Yes. And she gets a Shopkin every time she does. She is, I was telling the guys, Max, she's, she went up to five times yesterday on the potty, no screen. She'll just go sit. She'll sit there for a second, smile at you, and go, making it wet. And next thing you know, you hear yeah. whoosh. And I'm like, yes, yes, She's been doing yes. this since Sunday. Good job. So we are not having any more screen fests. It'll be quiet, nice, Yeah, yes. I didn't think we were going to get to that screen. <sighs> Life is good those moments but yeah when you guys are doing the builds of your characters I'm, I don't question a lot but know the rules that's what I keep saying know your feats know your class features know your tricks um, there are too many archetypes there are too many builds you can't remember everything and, and I don't have an eidetic memory I'm not going to sit here and try to memorize it all and one thing I hate doing in a session is challenging somebody time and again and saying don't make me go sort through your things. And yeah, Scott, this is going on tape for you, and I'm sorry you're the one that's the brunt of this. This could be anyone on tape. But know your stuff. It drives me just wonky because it's like people expect me to know how to GM. I, all I ask is just know your class. I mean, perfect example, Max, and, and I really appreciate it. You know your rogue inside and out and what you're doing with it. You know your sorcerer and what you're doing with it. Yeah. You know your, your healing priest and where you're going with it. You have your backgrounds and the wise. Brian has come into understanding and doing his paladin. So he really has kind of gotten to where he knows him. Now, he's still getting to know Greta. That's why he's letting me run. We're still trying to figure out with Greta what to do, whether letting him run her full time or me. But just know how they mesh together. And, and if you got questions, go out to the well, website. That's what I do, because I always ask questions. I know I need to screw things up. Oh, that's and that's okay. Like it came out of like a Japanese background CD. Yeah, these are all kind of out of movie soundtracks and different things. That's why I kind of like them. I don't do this. Right. <laughs> I, I like a lot of movie soundtracks. Okay. I've, I've come to really like a, a band. I actually found out that they did a lot of like movie soundtracks Which, that I really uh, like. They're called the Juno Reactor. Oh, I heard of those yeah, guys. Yeah, they... They did a lot. I mean, they, they're most famous for me that they did most of the soundtrack for the Matrix trilogy. Okay. Including, uh, including La Navras, which is the one, yeah. which is the one that played when they had the final was battle at the end of the third movie. Be Brian. Brian, is that you? Seriously. Probably can't yeah. hear Don't make me have to get off. Yeah. On an unrelated topic. Yes. I'm missing my foresight to die. This collection. Which four sided? The blue? I might have. Let me look. 
So if anyone comes across one, I got a giant pile. Of I got it. Come on. Was it the other Let neighbor? See, no, it wasn't even anything. It was Amazon. Oh, yes. I got it. Tom, come in. Oh God, that's a pretty bright sky blue. That'll yeah. stick out like a sore thumb. Quit playing with it, Janet Marie. <laughs> I love if it. It, 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 yeah, if it turns up while we're playing, dude. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Either that or I wonder if. No, I don't know. Could Brian have gotten it? Maybe. I don't know. Brian sits near you. Yeah. Um, and that's like. I was the only thing the last time I was the one that sit right across. No, no, no. Last time I was right here. Yeah. Because the yeah. you know when you, when you roll them, they. Yeah, scattered they scatter. Janet, I don't think got. I don't think. Yeah, I don't. Really, G normally. Yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's not that big a deal. I have, I have, I have another set. Okay. I know it, you know, I don't, you, we don't use foresight yeah. that often. And it's magic missile and daggers. Yeah. That's about all they get yeah. used for most days, yeah. or for but, some sort of effect. I, I, it, it's more of a case of if if. Uh, Who the stargates? Yeah. If an unfamiliar foresighted die shows up at some well, point. Nine. Oh, by the way, so well, there is for you a two liter of Pepsi. Oh, okay. Now, when you open it, the slow. It? <laughs> it did roll <laughs> around in the trunk. That's very the cool. same yeah. thing for the two liter of Mountain Dew. That's very right there. Okay. That's, our that's our boy. That's our. So you that's have our been red drag. If you get splashed by soda. I well, am no longer time, culpable. Okay. By the time <laughs> by the time we open it, though, it'll you make so, so well, no, we're it, gonna it, it we'll, we'll, down, we'll yeah. start yeah. in. Can Brian can always get the backstory. So, you guys last time had found everything with the ravens. Um, you guys are making your way back this way. Max up there, and we're Scott floating, and um, Cliff was kind of investigating there, and then you guys, and then Remily was. Uh, and we won the first medal of the Olympics, gold of the Olympics. Yes. What did we Did win? we really? Yes. 10 meter air rifle. Wow, oh, wow. that's some almost of, unheard of for a, us. Yeah, some American woman. When's the last time we won a rifle know. of well, you know, aware of? I was really? watching I was watching the opening ceremony. Oh, gun nuts that we have more women one one than men. We yeah. have two hundred and ninety three women and one hundred and sixty some men. But you know what? I'm surprised we have anybody. With the Zika as crazy as it is right now, you know it's there's going to come more back. Americans there than any other country. Well, yeah. yeah. And watch what happens. Zika comes back to America in force. Oh, and that's already Zika here. Yeah, well, in Florida a little bit, but you Florida. know what? No, it's in Texas. Texas. Yeah. It's a Zika is everywhere now. Right. That's because of the planes. Airplanes and oh, those yeah. little things stole away in the airplanes and bite people. And I, don't, on. I don't know if I'm like an issue. People in the mosquito skin. But, uh, but let's be honest. Like, Brazil cut down how many of its rainforests? That's why this is going on. Yeah. Leave the friggin' no, forest. Uh, I don't think it's the forest. You know what I think it is? Hmm. It's the fact that they don't have sufficient way to handle plumbing. Uh, and what happens is, is that you, you, you get... get there's, you, a lot, there's also a lot of countries that, you know, even if they have good hospitals, don't necessarily have a very good medical infrastructure. Right. Like a system. Yeah. So you can't just point at one thing. Yeah. You know, it's that, that's it. It's well, yeah, a I, whole I'm bunch sure. of... It's, there's a lot of little things that add up down here from, from the to breed. Yeah. That you guys and and that's well. the reason why there's a lot there. Yeah. And the other reason about it, too, the other thing about it is... Is unless you're pregnant or planning on getting pregnant, it's no risk. It's no, it's no risk, and it's not even, it's not even. A you cannot, yeah, you cannot even know you have it. Which is yeah. why I was surprised there were so many women there. I know. Two hundred and ninety-three. Uh-huh. And it's like, I'm sorry, but it's like, if you're an it's, Olympic athlete, it's the Olympics. They want you to are probably in the range where you can have children. Yeah, and most likely you you're not going to be old enough to where it's like, oh, I'm in menopause. Yeah. I don't remember yeah. about that. It's right. like, eh, and you're probably not an Olympic athlete. Yeah. yeah. Plus, a lot of the, those athletes are basically when they're not competing, they're basically stored in this little area where they have hotels and you know little campsites. And what do they do when you know they have all these? I know yeah, Olympic like, Adonises who are in the prime of their youth. You know they're going through. You know they're going through truckloads of condoms. Yes, they are. Well, so, <laughs> so that's true. All right. What goes on in, in Rio stays in Rio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for more reasons than one. 
All right, so you guys come back to the door that's open. There was the, the hidden door at the front. This, of course, is the cauldron room where you guys navigate and have everything. Now, you notice that the root cellar is gone. The only thing there is is this room and then that outer knot of rooms and yeah. this. And some of the supplies that you saw in the root cellar, of course, in this area were rat poisons. And he's okay. sitting out here at the table where Cliff left him. And uh, Cliff with us? Uh, he's right here. And, and all right, I can run Cliff yep. too. So yeah, that'll be good. Well, you guys will be... <laughs> I have all three seats. So you guys can come in. This this looks like where he sleeps at with some of the supplies, and over here is where he eats and watches from his table. And then this area out here, you guys kind of peeked around. There were some barrels there, and there's the front door for the hut that leads you out to the porch. All right. So we got we got the three amulets. I got the easiest one. You can feel the hut is moving. It's kind of swaying. Swaying? Yeah, you guys feel it. You guys don't get knocked down or anything, but there is some serious movement going on. Okay. Rat balls just, you know, you hear them humming a tune kind of in some tune that you don't know out here. Okay. So, <clears throat> up to you guys what you want to do. So is this swing? Is it? Uh, I'm kind of imagining it's like kind being, of a, on a, being on a tall, thin building. You know, yeah, you just feel kind of like, like this way, lower leaning this way. Kind of like maybe the hut is kind of like anxious. Yeah, it's like the it's is foot to foot or is doing something. Or something. Uh, maybe it's walking. Could I don't be. know. I don't know. Anyways, so I got the Aegeus. Who got the, uh, the the first one? The the one with the swirl. That's kind there of like was. I think something. I think Scott. Was going to the brooch of shielding? That was the brooch of shielding. That's the brooch of shielding. Yes, that's who, the brooch of shielding. Who got the brooch of shielding? I think it was Scott. If not, you don't nope, want to give, show up. If Scott doesn't want to give it, you can give it to Remily. Remily can always wear it. I mean, since so she's with you guys, or you can give it to someone else. You have a brooch, I remember. If correct, you have the third one. I ended up with one. Of them. Yeah, you ended up with the third. You ended the up with is, second. The brooch is a neck do item. You, right? Do you have a neck item available or not? I might have ended up with a of natural armor. Why does he think he had a neck slot? He doesn't. I have so, an open neck slot, but I don't think I accepted I, any. Okay. Because I don't have anything listed on here. Yeah, the, you guys had and the, then the, the last the one. My neck slot is the new. last one. I forgot what the last one is. The brooch of shield. I have a plus like one. A is the brooch of shielding better than a plus one? Yeah, it protects you from magic missiles and the like. Oh, no, I don't want it. I, I okay. Stick with my plus one. Do you want Remley to take it so you guys have it on you guys? Sure. If you want to give it to Remley, that's fine. Just so yeah. that we have it. All right, let's do that. Then let's see. Now, now who's got the chime? The last one, I think, was the chime, wasn't it? What's the chime do? Yeah, the chime of opening. It's a chime of opening. I already have a wand of knock. Well, I don't know if you guys want to keep it or not. I want it. All right. Put it. Put it. Add it to your guy. Yeah. Chime of opening? I'm not ever going to say good for a chime of opening. Yeah, that's just basically... Yeah, the first one and the the storage in my way. Not anymore. <laughs> All right, so we're good. <clears throat> yeah, between the magic items and him, yeah, we're never going to lock doors or inconvenience. Just a matter of how many stand, uh, standard action. All right. Another brooch here on the. That on brooch shielding. Karata, I'm not familiar with that one. Neutral good. I always love, love these. Foresight. Buy it? No. Buy it for free? Yes. <laughs> Drives me nuts. It's the only thing I don't like about um, our fine program of Hero Labs. You gotta tell it it's free. Free, free, free. All right, so you have the last thing you guys remember going through was the nightmare, the witch daughter's nightmare with the daughter who was a nightmare who died, the great granddaughter. And so, Ghosty one of the things. revenge, all those things. And then you guys made it back to Rat Boar the Bold. And so, and again, Cliff was talking to him some. Cliff kind of. <laughs> I guess relate, well, Remley was with him. She relates that basically what he said was, um, she goes, yeah, he said the cookbook, and if we could get the cookbook for him and release him, he would be happy. He told us more about where we're at, when the, that's the march, and, and somewhere, he thinks. 
And yeah, and you guys know the last symbol from the riddle is this theory of artosia. And artosia from the history thing that you guys made a roll on, I think Cliff did, the artosia is supposedly an area where the, the witch built three edifices, a mother, a maiden, and a crone. Large stone edifices of these. That's really pretty. Yeah, it's mine. Yeah. So it's it's in the middle of nowhere, but it's it was left by Baba Yaga. And what you guys kind of think from putting the clues together is there's going to be something of value in each of them that's going to lead you to Baba. All right, so then that's where we have to go. I'm work home. All right. All right. So if, if remember once we leave. He's not going to let us back in. Yep. Not until you get at least the cookbook. Let's attach my name to this one. He's over here. She's here. And she's here. Scotty is watching the back. And you two are not his normal spot, but, you know. He's that one goes, ah, oh, you're back. I see you have done the scenes with the crows. And you have the amulets. Yes. Yes, we do. Well, he says, I wish you well. You're welcome to leave at any point. He says, but to return and not have me attack you and try to kill you, you must do a favor, like your friend has asked about. Bring back the cookbook and release me, and I will let you back in. He says, it's not here. She could have left it in the mother maiden of Chrome. Oh. Oh, and he says, and beware of Kostaki. Your friend asked about Kostaki. Uh, sure, he'll be fine. This is Kostaki's no. own. I, I can guarantee that no matter whether we succeed or not, you'll be free of your servitude in this place. So, have fun. All right. So he just motions you guys up here as you guys start heading to the door. Uh, let's see. Put everybody kind of in here. I really need to get intimidated to skill. And then... You go the first? On here. Now we got to do the yeah. outer rounds. All right. So, <clears throat> we don't... <clears throat> Should we be prepared in case we, we, we encounter something out there? Oh, there's something interesting. You are moving back and forth still. I don't know what's going on, so... No, uh, we did all those tests. We fought, I think the ghost lady was the last one, or the second to last one, something like that. Despite it only being a week, it feels like my like mind is like... Only <laughs> it's like it was three weeks ago. Well, because be just because I worked last night, I'm just tired. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do bless on everybody just to be safe. Just bless. Um, and what these guys are, I'm doing here is in case you guys do perceptions, which we might as well do a perception rule for everybody to kind of kick it off and get everybody ready. All right, Cal alphabetically is first. I'll roll first with Cal. And Cal's perception is plus 10, Ooh, which is 22. 20. So mine's at 32. All right, so 32 on payment. All right. Okay, what is Cal's? Cal's is 22. 22. All right. How about Damien? Four. 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 Damien. Oh, six. Uh, Damien's daydreaming uh, about perception. Plus eight. Orin is, is 20. Goes to kill it. She's a 19. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't Thalo use the is, is a 22. Uh, this is not for good. finding tracks. So. Okay. Third. Ew, 15. 15. 15 for that one. All right. He had the best plus and he had the most. So we got a couple 32s. Um, well, actually, Cal, I was trying, we got a 30 and 32. So Remily and Payment are very alert. All, All right. right. So let's see. Where is the black kind of one? Give yourself a, a bless. Oh, okay, that's true. Well, West is going to be this outer deal. No, but, uh, but it does give you a plus one on your. Uh, All right, so as you guys will go out. It's attacks and will saving throws against the right, attack, attack rolls, weapon damage rolls, and saving throws. I, think, I think that's a prayer. Now, I know I'm kind of No, prayer does the skill checks and the minuses too. Yeah, but it doesn't do the. Less doesn't do the damage rolls. This is the high. 
Here, oh no, that, I'm sorry, that's yeah, mythic. I'm sorry. There we go. Uh, just right. get so that rolls is the outer porch area of the hut, by the way. Okay. And the hut kind of goes around like this on the outside, even though it doesn't look like it. Kind of like this. All right, cool. All right, so you open the door, <laughs> looking out. What do we see? The hut is attacking something. Or some things. Okay. I can sell my perception that the hut is made. Yeah. Standing in front of the hut are, whoops, a giants. Base. Giant. A frost giant. giants. Frost giants. Yes. Frost giants. Quite a few frost giants. With I put up the other one that's kind of it's leader. One, two, three, four, there it is. Five, six. And the leader. It's getting attacked the most by the hut. And it's just, the axes are swinging at the hut, and you see little chips coming off, and the legs are reaching out and kicking the giants and okay. scratching and goring them. So you are, you guys come out to this, and you guys are actually at eye size range. Well, just slightly above the head range of these guys. <laughs> You're looking at basically just this part of their head over the bottom part of the porch. That's how tall the hut is standing fully up. So we're, we're quite a way That's up. why this little, this little guy here doesn't even begin to do it justice. <laughs> they're, they're like looking up at the stairs, trying to chop the stairs. And they're shouting in giant, something obscene and giant. They're not happy about life. Yeah, they don't speak giant. Yeah, you know. Well, uh, try skull. Try speak giant. I'm going to yell at them. What the you heck are you, you doing to my house? You want to know? <laughs> what I the heck? I can't comprehend the languages of you. Okay. All right. What the heck are you doing? I'm going to my cast house? confusion. And <laughs> that bluff nice. is a 33. All right, so a 33 bluff roll. This will be fun. All right. Let me go to my frost giant things. All right, where are they? 66. So that's that. And the sense motives on them. I uh, know. Yeah. So they got a regular sense mode. If you roll the what on that, the, the leader shouts back in kind of a broken skull Stop, cut, sit down, you Baba Yagas. I shot back. Do I look like a bit? I mean, which do you? And yeah, that's a 29. Alright. Yeah, yeah. Also, no! Also, all four of these guys can make a little safer. Okay. Alright, so one's right here. One, two, three, and four. Yeah, affects all, all right. creatures within a 15 foot radius. Will save. What, what kind of will save do they have to make? Oh, it's going to be ridiculous. It's one of my most powerful spells. And where are we at? All right, so the leader is the blue one. None of them are healing with all spells. Will saving throw DC 27. Wow. All right. Um, one of them made it. <laughs> all right, so confusion. Let me get out the confusion card. This will be fun to me. The different things. Dazed and confused. At least I got a bless up. <laughs> Dazed and confused. <clears throat> and confused. Can I have a... Yes? Uh, um, yeah. Actually, no, I'm going to put my back up. All right. Hi, Minnie G. Guys, come here and look at this. I don't think it's going to be starting without these. No, because I don't think so. Because with that, you can see it move. Yeah. I screw these into the wall. Yeah, so that's going to fit right inside. Do it in the wall, because that would be easiest. All right. So he is C for confused. This one's not. All right, let's do the other two. Okay, so this one and this one. 
A one, well, he's confused. <laughs> Absolutely. And then uh, 26, so he's confused. So of the three, the leader and the two others are going, they're confused. All right, so confused means if you are attacked, everyone you attack that creature until dead. At the beginning of the turn, roll a percent to determine how you act. <laughs> There's a 25% chance that they act normally, 25% chance that they just do nothing. <laughs> Everything else is either attack your friend or attack yourself. I love it. I love attack it. Attack yourself? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. And they will defend themselves if attacked, so even if they're doing nothing or act, you know, like they're acting normally. Stand here, uh, on, on the right, I'm going to put down, let me get Remily and Greta's stuff real quick so I got... Yeah, I'm just going to keep passing the spell until they're all effective. So, then we're just going to keep bullshitting. 79. AC of. If we don't need to attack, I'd say it's not even bothering. That's, uh, that's no me. I don't always rather talk my way out of it. Well, the thing is, today, now, now we have someone that's controlling Cal Ellen. We'll allow yeah. you to just fly off the bat. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it, love it, love it. No, 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 no. It's better if you just stand here and just let them uh, be confused. Stand there and glower, Howard. Stand there and glower. Damien, Damien's doing our work for us. We don't have to fight him. <laughs> God, you guys are fun. I love it. He is, he's going to... You know the funny part about this? He's going to hear this for posterity <laughs> after the fact. And, and it's going to be funnier and crap. Yeah, All right, so... This is the... This and can, uh, suggestion of the first two major enchantment spells I get. It only goes uphill from here because I start getting... I love that you're using that, and one. these guys are like, I'm so confused, I don't know what I'm... I, I think probably the will save is the weakest one of the guys. You know what the funniest a, thing? Yeah, I mean, on top of my charisma being a 28, I get a plus 4 bonus to enchantment. <laughs> cut to 28. Hmm? You know what the funniest thing is? Remley's armor class is the same as Greta's. I mean, I believe you. Now, just, mind you, that's against a medium just, creature. Imagine against giants for her armor classes. Uh, 18 base, plus 4 enhancement, plus 2 level, plus it's 2 like, racial, plus she's 2 from she's Bobby small, right? Yeah. Oh. She's small. She's small. So against something that's giant size, she's going to get like a plus 4 to her armor class. So she's like a 28 for them to try to hit it. Hit the little spike. Hit the little spike. I can't. So that's what I say. Technically, she is a 28 against the Giants, which is hilarious. So she's harder to heck to hit. All right, so they're confused. So let's see what they do here on this first round, if they do any combat of any sort. I um, imagine we should initiate initiative at this point. Probably, but let's just for kicks and giggles see what happens with 41. I will. So babble incoherently. All three of them are babbling incoherently. I don't know. Yes? Can I borrow you to give me the one of our stars? The star? It's not a star, it's a voice. I call it a star! Back off! Do you want to speak their language? I'm the one installing this screaming thing, not... I'll, if I get one more, I'll just get these three that were affected. That's fine. I'm just... I'm just... No, I'm to here to, in case we get into trouble. And, 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 and Janet's bringing the ice dragon and the frost dragon, just by the way. And at that point, I won't have to worry about the other two. Salo and Kalo, I'm not going to have them fight. All right. Anyway, so let's let's do this then. All right. We'll do an initiative just for kicks and giggles in case anybody decides that they're going to fight these bad boys. Um, just so everybody has their initiatives. Let's see, she has. We have what, seven that we're fighting? Six, yep. Yeah. Alright, so Remily is the green one. Greta is the red one. Alright, so Remily goes on a 27. Greta goes on a 24. 27. 18. Kellen. Was on a 13 plus 17. Okay, so 18, 17. So, so 19 for Kal El. Okay, so Kal El is in there. 9 for uh, Orin. 9 for Orin. And 
29 for Othello. Okay, so 29 Ballo, nice. And then let's do Rothar. I'll do Rothar in there. Rothar goes on a 25. All right, so now we're going to do the Giants that are still kind of semi semblance. We go on a 15 plus. Let's see. 15 plus. Zero. So they go on a 15. That's really nice. So the Giants don't go until 15. So the order is going to be Thalo, Remley, Rothar, Greta, Cal El, Payne, Ben Damien, the Giants, and Orn. All right. So, oh, in the hut. Let's do the hut. The magical hut of Baba Yaga. Oh, yeah. The Baba Yaga hut go way up there on 33. So just imagine if this thing have a giant beak on its side. Oh, it is. I mean, literally, the Baba Yaga's hut is not a friendly thing. In fact, I need my other module for what the hut does in damage. Yeah. <laughs> I have no doubt about it. If it fights like a oh, chicken it's, it's, or, or a rooster, then it's going to be pretty brutal. I, I make my bones in telling you guys, it is a relic, okay? It's a relical item. So you got regular, maybe tough giants against a relic. What do you think is going to happen? Wow. Yeah, it's got a 37 strength and a 34 dex. It can die. <laughs> you know, that the, the hut has been hit, but it, it magically heals at a fast rate of 20. There is a... So the hut don't die easy. There is a... Immortal structure. <laughs> I love it. All right, two claws plus 38 and a slam plus 38. All right, so the first giant, all right. One is... Yeah. All right, the, they're all plus 38. The bite is the... Don't roll a one. I rolled one. <laughs> 38, and it, so a 46 and a 42. And then it's got a one. How do I turn this thing off? I want to negotiate. Yeah, it's 13. I don't know. I don't know. It, I don't know you don't. You could, you could try to go back in and place what's his name. <laughs> yeah, you don't really turn it off. It's got a defense mechanism. Um, so it goes 9 and 6 is 15, and 15 and 26 is 41. You basically see it eviscerate this giant, believe it. Now, he's, he's been hit. You guys have been in there for how long? This thing appeared, this thing, to give you an idea, it's been fighting since it's been here. You guys just haven't noticed the movement until you got towards the front. So this guy has probably taken over 200 points of damage from it. So he's gone. That's the nice thing. This thing has been defending you guys while you're here. And the hut is hurt, but it keeps healing very quickly. All right. So the hut has gone. It is Thalo. What is Thalo going to do? The giants are like at their leader, and they're just, ah! In anger, the ones that are still, you know, these which are, ones are still, which ones are Which one is not that one? These two are babbling. These four are not. Well, he's going he's gonna to shoot um, a sling bullet at that guy. It has a, uh, a special sling bullet. And yes, smoke, all these creatures are considered engaged for flanking type of things. And remember, he gets inspiration things on his to hit. You can burn inspiration there. It's called an inspired hit. If he stands now, this round he can't, but next round he can't. It's like Max's critical hit, or well, threat range for a for a um, a backstab. He doesn't need to move, so he can calm his breath and use a steady shot. Yeah. It is within thirty feet, so he can get his point blank shot. Good. Yeah. The first round for an the investigator is always he, normal, he, and then the next round is always considered they've studied the creature that they're. Okay, so the so creature. study foe will come in next round. Yes. All right. And that's where it does its extra D6s or D8s damage. Like well, instead of 1D4 plus 1, it goes 1D4 plus 5. It gets a plus 4 in damage roll. And yes, from being up high above these guys, Max, you are automatically flanking. They are engaged with the hut. <laughs> they don't care about you. You're a rider. <laughs> they care about the big chickeny thing pecking at them. And you guys, surprisingly, it, when it bends over the peck, you guys don't move. Um, you are glued where you are unless you want to. 33 will hit. All right, so it needs to make a uh, save. All right. What kind of save does it need to make? A fortitude save. All right, a 40 save. DC right. is only 13. Uh, that's going to be, they get a plus 10, unfortunately, but. Yeah, that's okay. But. He's an investigator. His job is not to sit there really doing 
do a whole lot. But if it fails, it's nauseated for two rounds. Uh, they'll do a DC 25. Okay, so it just gets a D4 plus three damage. All right, so three. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well, gonna hit. That doesn't hit hard. <coughs> Alright, so he does three, so that one's there. Alright. Okay, so the next one. Who is going? That will be Remily. Oh, Remily's gonna have fun. Remily kind of flits over. Where did he fire at? This guy right here? Yeah. She kind of flits down this way and then takes shots. But she's not going to get off of them, but to uh, engage. Um, oh, and I got to do the hut. I'm sorry. Hang on. Let me do the hut real quick and see what happens with the. Um, Let's move these out here. You guys got to confirm it. Yeah, I got to confirm that it's a critical fail. Oh, Remy right. failed? No, 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 no. The hut failed. Oh. Put these here, and we'll see if she can get the hut confirms. And I'll move these out here. So I think her hut's Ah, uh, no, forty-two. It won't. All right. Just so imagine this thing tripping over. We end up fighting I'm like this. this yeah. Eleven. So that's a twenty. It just a big wicked witch of a beast. So she yeah. hits it once. So I need six. Plus six plus two. So she has seven more points. The one you've already hit. Okay. All right. Next will be Rothar. All right. So make me a 50 50 roll um, on this one, Josh, what he'll do. High 50, he does something. Low 40. 50, he watches. 40? So he just kind of watches. He's like, I don't need to be hitting these things. The hut's doing it, but fine. <laughs> All right, so now we are to Greta. Greta is debating herself on what she should do. Her boyfriend is not attacked, and however, she lusts for battle. And yep, she is a 54, so she lusts enough for battle that she swings that great axe out at its head. <laughs> this one's plus 18, this one's plus 13. Uh, 20, 39, and 17 will hit with a 39 will. So there you go. This so is 8 points plus 13 is 21 points. That's a bit more pyramid. Oh, no, one. That's one's been yeah. hit before. Okay. We're standing up on all the ledges. Yeah. <laughs> well, the actual, I'll show you, the actual battle, they have a picture of it, and I think I have it on this. To show you guys kind of how you're looking right now. It's uh, interesting. I downloaded a lot of pictures last night. Surprisingly. Okay. You're not going to sit here and watch me do this. Let's see. All right. Let's see if I got the picture for you guys in this one. It's kind of a cool one, even. So, I mean, what I say, when you guys are up in the air fighting this thing, the giant's heads come up out to the balcony, and it's it's kind of a fun mess. The thing leans in, and when it leans, Greta's going off the side of it, and she's protected. You guys, by this by this balcony rail, because of what it is, and because of the hardness of the hut, you basically get a plus two to your armor class automatically being behind the rail. Even if you're right up against it, because they have a chance of hitting the rail instead of reaching up there. A real good chance. So, just keep that in mind. Your armor class is plus two without any magical affords to it. Um, Cal L, what is Cal going to do? Just stand and watch? <laughs> Cal's not going to want to stand and watch. You know he wants to do the death from above. <laughs> And that, and he can fly. He can fly, and, yeah. and, and he would come He'll fly off. He'll probably fly up and sit there and attack this. Yes, he would fly off and come down with his falcata swinging. 
Yes, he's going to do that with his death Scott, throw Scott, we above. know you too well. Cal L is flying from death with above. So that's All for right. him. He's going to do death with <laughs> above. If he goes right up in front of it, he'll take an attack of opportunity. Ah, oh, that's what that oh, no, plus five, five is. Oh, no, because he's above it. That's now. what that plus five is. That plus five that, that's other death is from, from his above. death from above. That's why he always that's does. That's why he's got it already there. Yes, it is. All right. So no he's already got it figured in. Since he goes first, they're flat-footed. Oh, yeah. I mean, and from where he's coming from, the vantage point, they're, yeah. they're, they notice you guys are there, but you are little <coughs> ants compared to the hut, which is big and now nasty. Now I and understand why he's not in there. I mean, it, and I'd say it to any GM, it's common sense. If, you're being a, if you are a monster of a giant size being attacked by a hut that's taller than you, it's doing massive amounts of damage to you. These little human beings up here, are after the fact. They're food for later. Leave them alone. <laughs> right. Okay. So you ready for my Her swing? Oh. Come on. She's playing with the fireball. Come sit. 18. 18. 18 um, is not going to hit? I don't think an 18 will hit. No. I don't think so. What? Stop. Mini G. You're okay. No. It's okay. Deep breath. Deep breath. Penguin's going to shoot the guy in front of him. Okay. I'm going to need Brick's help whenever you guys are done tonight because I can't get it screwed in. Janet, stop! I would say, honey, leave all the projects till we're done. I was trying to get it done, so it's done! Real, real. I'm not. I think I'm hitting. Something because it's hard as heck and I can't get through it. You're hitting a a joist that's framing around the course. So it's stud. It's a it's, it's a it's big four by four or two by four they put in. Yeah. All right. Now I know what it's plus five to throw. Okay. You know. So what'd you do, Payne? Okay. Payne missed. Damien. You three get to make a well save. DC twenty seven. <laughs> you would love sending them to La La Land, don't you? Alright, so fail, that's pretty much. These are plus 10, so how much is it? 18, 27. Okay, so they gotta do an 18 or above. Ooh, one of them rolls a natural 20. The one on the end is not. Are the others confused? Uh, yep. <laughs> so, Janet, what do you so, want for how lunch? How many rounds are they confused? Hot dogs or no? Um, it's a round per level spell. So, the first ones are, we'll have seven more rounds. Okay, so well, seven. Since none of them have actually. What do you eight, want? Eight, 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 eight. Yeah. Why not some hot dogs? The first two have seven, and the second two have eight. Tomorrow, hot dogs, hot dogs for lunch. Hot dogs. All right, so that you takes us down cheese? to them. They're actually going. They haven't gone yet, but they're going now. And uh, the one will attack Cal L because Cal L is in front of him. Yeah. It's kind of a gnat flying down at his face, so it's kind of like got his attention. All right. Oh, Janet. I told her hot dogs, and that's what I get. <laughs> you were having such a good day, and then he melt down. You will go to bed if you don't stop. Then stop. Right. Hey, you guys are lucky. These guys right now are half good points. <laughs> All right, so four of them. All right. All right, so the first one will be the white dice, the second one's the blue dice, and the third one's the other dice. And the white dice is a 19. Ooh, that could be good. All right, so 19. 19 hits Cal L be a 46 to hit Cal L. A 34 and a 30. Will all three hit? Uh, Cal L is 46. AC is 22. Yeah, he hit them all three times. That ain't good. All right, Cal L. This is where it all plays in. These are 3d6 plus 22 damage. So, um, that's 33 points to Cal L so far. Um, that is 62 points to Cal L so far. And then that is uh, 100 points of damage to Cal L. Like he's dead. Like dead, dead? Dead, dead. You just killed him. Sorry, Scott. <laughs> Cal L just flies into the building. 
I'm sorry, they get free attacks. I do not have my bow. Imagine them like flying off them, they get a good strike in, but you know, they're just they too are. good at playing baseball. <laughs> they're, they're just, I mean, and the rest thankfully are on the building. So let's see what it does. I can see this happening because, you know, after that incident with the dragon, you know, a big scary thing, gets a little overconfident. Yeah, I'm not Superman. Yes. I am not I being not Superman will fly up, kill these things, and smack. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to that is 18 plus 22 is 40 times 8 is 3 point. The hut kind of lists and goes down. And you guys are going, oh crap, because you're holding on. And the cut crashes to the ground with big rents out of it. And then all of a sudden, you see the hut just totally come up again and stand right back up there. They basically kill the hut and it gets right back up. Okay? Just saying. They they did they did double its they, they killed they did over 188 more than what it can take. But because of the nature of what it is, it's an artifact. It comes right back up again. I mean it goes down, it'll lose attacks this next round. Okay? And then it's moved back some. So they're now here. It's not like Dr. Frank's uh, walking house or from that one episode no. of the temple where it gets right up, walk, walks through the Howl's feet, moving castle. Falls, <laughs> falls over and immediately catches on fire. Yeah, think of Howl's moving castle where it kind of gets knocked down, knocked to pieces, but it keeps moving. <laughs> That's kind of it. Where it refolds itself back. Because Cal prefers the power of it. it yeah, it's the, it's the enchantment is, so, is almost godlike on this hunt. So now you guys know if you ever have to battle the hut, you ain't gonna kill it. Not easy. Now without some serious stuff. Alright, so Thalo goes first as the hut raises itself back on the ground. Because it's out of the threat range, because it fell backwards, it's coming back up without a threat. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to destroy this before I can see. Thank you, Bubble. Uh, not yet. I've been hit. Well, if that'll can shoot another bolt. Alright. I will. I'm just going to wait to see if he starts trying to Uh, same guy? Six. Yes, we hit. Same guy, I take it? Yeah. Yeah, their armor class right now is... Seven damage. Seven, seven damage. Alright, so... <laughs> hey, you know what? Every little bit... <coughs> All right, so Remily, I'm going to take Cal L off because Cal L is down right now. Well, I don't think it would have made any difference if Scott was here or not. He would have attacked him just like that, and he'd have taken the three hits just like that. He, he's like some of the other people I've known probably would have spent 30 minutes. Well, well, you you talk to me if it were me, I would have just else. stayed where I was. But since it was like, we're playing Cal's character, then that's okay. what Cal would have done. So, and I'd say this to the camera again to Scott. Scott, when have you ever stayed still? Very yeah. seldom. Only during the hard <laughs> negotiations. Once it falls apart, you are all over dying. <laughs> or killing. One of the two. Yeah. Yes. Um, Pal-El is Roth, dead, buddy. Rothar has been a lot better about yeah. choosing. Pal-El Pal-El is dead, buddy. Of course, he usually chooses. He died well. in the first round of combat. Oh, Jesus, what happened? They did 100 points of damage to him, the Giants. Ow. Yeah, we're, we're fighting for us. may actually try and give him resurrection. I've been... Yeah. <laughs> so moving his body. But, yeah. But this is the scene, but with you guys on the front of the hut. Oh. Yes. So Scott's not connected to your one? Uh, no, unfortunately he is not. So, but he is being tamed, so wave at Scott. Tell him, tell him hello. Sorry. <laughs> yes. But, Rothar uh, stay out of, stayed out of the well, Rothar stayed out of it. Again, and this is what I say, because he'll give me a little, he may give me a little guff, he may not. Cal L, first of all, would not stand back and let the hut battle these things. He's going to jump in the fray, right? One of you ever know him to stay. Yeah. Sounds like Scott. Other than negotiation. So he does his death from above. Unfortunately, the roll by Paul was not a good one. So he did no damage to him. The giant rolled three hits. He rolled a 19, a 17, and a 13. All of them are plus um, 22. Plus they have an enormous uh, hit on, on them due to their strength and, and they size, do 3d6 so. plus 22 damage. 
Yeah, that's what they were doing, throwing rocks? No, they were using an axe. They were hitting him with an axe. Wouldn't he have flown above it? Mm, not under no, range. because the no. casters just move action to come as from depth to, from above okay. and then just swing. Yeah, if, you're, if, if, if you're going to do Unfortunate. melee with the other guy, you can't fight. Yeah. I yeah. just thought there was only one that would have been able to hit. If it. he was sitting in front of it, well, there was but only the other one. Two, the, the other two were confused. There, there well, you miss it. There was only oh, one. One giant gets oh, one three giant attacks three around attacks? at plus 22 to hit. Oh, okay. So the one yeah. giant sit there and swung, 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 and finished. How should I say it? The, the adventure path, though, is the GM. Right now. I'll just say this out loud because he's not here. But the adventure path does not take into account you guys' combat. They take into account the hut combat. However, I know how this is a player. He wants the experience, he wants the damage, he wants to be Oh, here he is. Uh-oh. Yeah, tell him, t tell him, he's, tell him. You Scott, tell him. you just died, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> this time. Oh, no, I'll tell him. Three hits from a frost giant for a total of 100 points of damage. Are you there? You did a death from above, you missed off the hut. He took three hits at you with plus 22. He did a 41, a 35, and a 30 to hit you. Yeah, I mean, we, we felt And then the each the damage the is plus 22 in damage. Kind of felt 3d6 plus 22. Bit, walked outside. So he's Frost dead for the moment. <laughs> walking all over our lawn. <laughs> I'm like, you get confused. <laughs> but but, but this is the well. the, the, hut, the hut died too, but then the hut got right back up at full hit points and started beating on him again. And three of them are confused. Well, four of them, I think, thanks to yeah. Damien. Damien. Four out of six confused. of them. Can you, can you say hi, Scott? Two out of three ain't bad. We were trying to talk to him. So if you want, Paul can put you on. Hey, if Paul. you want, uh, he, I guess can do video call you. We should take a look at him. him. But Damien is just kind of proud <laughs> of him already. So he's like, confusion. I can talk to him. I did. He, he did. <laughs> we gotta get a, we got to get a raise dead for you. Yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll raise you, you as, soon as, as soon as we can, and then I'll use restoration to get rid of your negative level. And it's being taped so you can watch the playback. All right. All right, <laughs> All right, All right my friend. Talk to, you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. I can speak giant. I love Max. He's taking that rather well. <laughs> yes. well and later on, it's going to be the, well, you okay. killed me off? The four like, are no. incoherently right now. No, no, not really. Well, we need to talk to one of them. All right. So, Remily, <laughs> so one Remily a little mad at the fact that her friend went right. down, her big her big battle kind of friend who flies, <laughs> is firing arrows at this time. Janet, are you bothering Paul? Yes. Remily's like... You can. She's like, Why are you bothering I Paul? Plus. I'd be a little careful though. Your wife kind of jumped into the fray too, so she might be yeah, on the choppy block. Yeah, so Greta, Greta is. Well, you guys are all kind of back now because the hut's back a little bit. And the giants haven't moved up yet. Okay, so Remy will hit on those one. So we killed one giant. We killed one giant. Yeah, the hut killed the one giant with a critical hit. That's just one. You're not tickling. Oh, she is. Right. She's tickling under her armpit and right on her, uh, right on her um, inner thigh. By, by the way, uh, Brian, they're all damaged. Okay. The huts could them the whole time. And the back of her knee. We're fascinated with your uh, dice tower. This looks like a patrol, most likely. Yeah, okay. The leader is down laying in front of the mouth. Oh, that's the leader? Yeah, it's the leader laying the queen. Yeah. On the ground. <laughs> The rest of them are kind of, dice tower. So, so this one, this one, this one, and this one are all confused. These guys are for seven rounds. Does your grandson still rounds. have a kind of and their own language in his own language? I'm fairly certain we all know that they're confused. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. They're, she they're, does oh, still. Let me roll for the other two what they're doing in their confusion because they might be killing their friends. <laughs> it hasn't been their turn yet, so we. Uh, no, but I'll, I'll have it ready for when they do. Let's see, a 30, no, a 93, so that could be bad. That could be them killing their friends. I think that's the one where they hurt themselves. Attack nearest creature. No, they will attack each other. Okay, those, <laughs> those two will paddle right. each other out. <laughs> so, so you see these guys turning and getting ready poised at each other while this guy's still on <laughs> All right, so you're going to talk. Rothar, it is your turn better. for the yeah, second yeah. round. You wisely stood back and watched last round because you figured the hut was doing just fine. I figured you might do that. Are we, are we oh yeah, like this up, or, in the, up in the air. 
You guys are elevated. Okay. That would be you at her level. You're above, just above their heads, slightly. So if you have a ranged weapon, you should or have uh, the the bonus you get for the fence that's around it is is again like a mythical type of material. It's wood, but it gives you a plus two to your armor class so long as you stay behind it. And the giant on the ground doesn't have a weapon in hand, right? The giant on the ground's dead and bleeding. Okay. His axe is laying beside him. <laughs> he did. And, and the hut that was damaged when you guys were looking at it, Janet, what are you doing? Are you going to kill Paul? <laughs> what are My you doing? My grandson does the same thing. He climbs all over. Right. <laughs> that's, that's her. She does it to him. He does it. She does it to me. To Josh, to Max, to Brian. No, one, to everybody. no one's no. left alone. Equal opportunity GM. Um, so yeah, the hut got wrecked. I mean, literally got hit by the giants. The main hits got knocked to the ground with pieces of twine. All of it Sorry, Paul. Oh, it's okay. Uh, you can try this across the world. This will be a, this will be what we need. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know? Did, did you say hi, meow? Giant? Yes. Did you? You got a meow. What's he say? What does meow say? Uh, meow. Meow. <laughs> that is one of the things he says. Yes. He says many things. I don't know, it's been so long I've forgotten. It's been yeah, almost 20 right. years since I've okay. seen yeah. him. You can, you can try to, to reason with him as a giant. He tried to like, ensconce him. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, Mommy's got your the chicken legs going. stand, the legs are almost as tall as the giants. They come up to about uh, 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 chest. Out of the kitchen. Figure what, a frost giant is. 17 foot, I think. Mm -hmm. They're large size, aren't they? Yeah, they're they're seven, 17, 18, so the legs are about 17 and a half. Okay, the large so size, I think, is between 8 at minimum and 16 at most. So they might be on the upper end of that, maybe 15, 16, unless they're huge, which would be like 16, okay. I'm thinking about right. jumping down. Would I be able to use that giant frost giant as cover? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. On the ground? Yes. The on its side, it stands about. Uh, probably a nine foot from the girth of its belly. All right, so um, not nine foot. Probably, probably about your height, seven foot. Oh, yeah, it's about. What do you think? Seven girth. And that one, that one was the leader, right? Yes, that was the leader. He's bigger. Okay, good. Absolutely. I'm going to, I'm going to drop down from the hut and draw my sword as I do that. Okay. As I'm falling, I'm going to call out. Say, um, do me a favor, do me a acrobatics. Be nice. If you don't have a great acrobatics, oh, this is to avoid damage from landing. On hey, right Janet, now. it's 1d6. BB seat's no. open, you should sit in BB seat. Oh, that's not good. Okay, <laughs> so you took three. Okay, I'm down. One horrible, you kind of maybe tweaked your crater a little, little, but you're like, okay, just created. <laughs> um, as I'm coming down, I'm going to yell out to them in giant. Uh, there seems to be a misunderstanding here. If everybody would just take a minute here to calm down, I think we can sort this out. All and right. as I'm doing that, I'm going to touch the, the giant on the ground and do lay on hands. Okay. <laughs> on yourself or on the giant? On the giant. All right. <laughs> Because of how many negative it is if you get him back, but... The problem with negotiating is we can't control the head. Uh, Rothar, if he wasn't dead, he's gonna Ooh, wake up still confused. Okay, so this one on this end kind of thumbs his axe, but he doesn't do anything. The other one here, not happening. Oh, uh, it's only... Yeah, and you heal up a little rent, but he's not getting up. But this one actually now is looking at you, like, over this way. But he's thumbing his axe, he's not doing anything. Not attack. Stop attacking. The others, however, not so much. The others are confused. And... But Rothar, I affected that one with a spell. If it's not dead, it's still going to be affected by it. Yeah. It uh, might try to murder you. I'll designate that guy as my smite evil target for the extra two armor too. Hey, honey, I'll deal with that up? when the time comes. <laughs> huh? I don't know if I'm This guy go a Baba Yaga song. I do about nine minutes. Have you seen the sauce nice. come down with that? that my, or no, that's that's a real thing. That's that's, that's the that's inside of the juice. Yes, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's a general term. All right, so um, 
Let's see, Greta, I'm going to Is Greta back up on the hut? Yes, she is. But Greta, but here's the thing. Greta was on the hut in the first place. But yes, Meowth. What? Oh, so she didn't get down to try to attack. She just went to the edge of the thing and just did it from the ledge. Okay, I promise. All right. So you got it. She is going to do an acrobatics. This is going to be fun. She's flying off after you, but not by the giant. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's beautiful. 23 max. Put her right here. She tucks and rolls and then runs up to the next giant right here. Whoa, whoa. The one that's not doing it. Yeah, the one that's kind of Who's battling that? his Red butt. No, 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 no. Yeah. Stop, Greta, stop. <laughs> She's like, woo, <laughs> battle. <laughs> She's like, yes, put on Greta, attack the one on the, on no, the no, end. No. Don't attack that one. He's going to try to kill his friend. Okay, she no, says. No. <laughs> she goes for that one instead. And she's I'm going to stop. She's like, she's like, stop. she's like, sorry, hon, I gotta go kill a giant. No, no, no. <laughs> it's her. She, she's a winner, woman. She's gonna go after the fucking time over. She didn't time now. All right, but all right, your turn. She's attacking them because he's trying to end the approach on his territory. <laughs> All they have to do is back up and the hot water tap. <laughs> the power is trying to diplomatically kill us. Brad is a bloodthirsty, brawling witch wolf. Natural 20. Yikes! Go, go, Max! I don't know if that would be what, what, what is the total? Let's see. She gets like a plus a lot. Plus no, he, he's, he's the one I'm confirming, so we'll see. Right, but I think she gets a plus 17 to hit with an attack, right? Oh yeah, she gets a Maybe. yeah, she gets a massive leap. Her her attacks are no, plus I don't, 18. I don't, plus I don't all right, so just well, a where all my what, do I need call seats? What's that AC? Well, where are you firing from? That's You're firing not, from a, a position where you can you can kind of set yourself and fire. Yeah. So you'll get the pluses for that. That's a plus two set because okay. you're you're firing more you know actively. Like plus three. Okay. Oh, you are you technically you above, so you get your flanking bonuses that's for that. Two. So that's twenty-one. Yeah, that will hit him. Right. You're lucky. He's raged, so yes. Even, even though he's calming down to look at what he's saying, they're raged up. All right. Fighting the hut. So. All right. He's going to do a massive destructive. By the way, the ones that look really bad, these two right here don't look good. Okay. These guys. This guy's been hit by you guys a few times. Oh, this oh, guy good, hit by the hut, and this guy hit by the hut. Okay, so when you are resistant, the, uh, so hideous lab draw. draw. They're, they're bleeding fighting. a lot. They've got claw marks and bite marks all so over. Do I do I use a bonus from here? Or do I draw? Draw. You draw, and and, and if it most makes your bonus better, then that's beautiful. You for piercing, because you're a piercing yeah. weapon. Piercing. Maybe. What happened? Yummy. Tongue piercing. Normal damage and one constitution damage. <laughs> Tar target gains 50% chance for verbal spells until you feel great. <laughs> what what do you mean better? The, the giant goes to open his mouth to say something and Payman shoots him right through the tongue. So now he has this beautiful arrow tongue piercing. Uh, <laughs> Some constitution. I mean, you know, they're they're not weak. These are. All right. So the lights kind of dim a little. Makes better. It was the most damage demons ever. Yes, it is. It was uh, forty-eight points of damage considering the con. So it was a. You guys see the tongue pierce the giant. Was, ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's bleeding. There's blood like fountaining out of the mouth. Nasty. All right, so that takes us to Damien. Damien, you're seeing this blood gore fest going on. 
This guy's not looking too good after the tongue piercing. This uh, guy's been hit before. Uh, which one is more damaged? The, uh, the one on that end is what? That one's more damaged? You gotta remember, Remily's arrows aren't that big. She's hard to hit, but she ain't that. Uh, she's not doing massive, she's doing a D6. It's not much. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 25, 45. Yeah, you should easily get Yeah, that's definitely within close range. I am going to spend expend a full round action to target this one with a persistent uh, enhanced uh, hideous laughter spell. Nice. So <laughs> did he see the nor Oh Lord, yeah, no, don't even worry about it. His will's plus ten, it's an eighteen at best. He's plus laughing ten. uncontrollably, possibly, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, if it, well, if it had, even if it had succeeded, what, it would have had to make the roll. What condition is the hideous laughter closest to? Uh, helpless condition. Pretty, pretty much help. Uh, not quite helpless. I know it falls prone and needs something else. In this okay, so it's a prone. All right. So here's prone. Uh, Uncontrollable <laughs> laughter collapses into gales of manic laughter, falling prone. Yes. Subject can take no actions while laughing, uh, <laughs> but, but it is not considered helpless. Okay, so it's laying on the ground, kicking and laughing uncontrollably. No, the no, other no, one. The one in front of Greta. The one in front of Greta. <laughs> now, that's a good question. From falling is a move action to go down. Would that have provoked an attack? I don't think so. No, it doesn't, it doesn't provoke unless you have beats with like trip and stuff. Getting up provokes, however. What is her beats? No, no, no. You have to be oh. the one to trip them. Oh, no. Well, yeah. All right, so they get to they get to go. This is just a debacle. All right, so the two hitting each other. This is the one hitting his friend next to him over here, hitting this one. All right, so that's a seventeen plus twenty-two. It's a thirty-nine, twenty-five, and thirty-two. All three hit. All right, this is gonna push this. So this is thirty-nine or twenty-nine points. Twenty-nine and thirty-three is sixty-two. Please don't. I, I know that song, and I don't want that in my head all night. Ninety some I still haven't found that song on YouTube, but as soon as I find it, he this takes is exactly the amount kind of situation with a big old divot, and he's he's going to move to his next friend in a minute. That one just lays the axe in. But let me see. They're same deck, so no, I'm not going to use that. Oh, remember they're on her hand. Or you can't get to it. <laughs> so I, this, uh, get they, get a, they get a new roll every round. So, all right. Uh, do you want to do it, or do you want? Yeah, me? do the do the roll on this one. Do the first one after. Uh, fifty-two. Fifty-two is what for those two right here. It's definitely either attack other or attack self. Deal one d eight points of damage plus strength mod to self. Okay, so d eight plus. Fifty's a self. Uh, Alright, the strength mod on these guys, you're gonna love this. Alright, what's the strength mod? The other mod? two continue babbling incoherently. Alright, so hang on. The the strength mod on self guy is going to do um No, I don't suppose anything. Oh, oh, Plus 20 points of damage to us, or plus 17 points of damage. So, what did you do for your roll? Oh, uh, the other two are still babbling in here. Yeah. Um, how about the ones that hit himself? No. Uh, to the eight plus 17. Oh, now for that. Himself. Yeah, you want to do it. That is a five. So uh, five plus 17. Points. Yeah. Okay, he's not looking too good. All right. So, that leaves the last one. The last one is running. Towards Greta. He's going to run down this way. He gets him up there. Or his friend might attack him. Attack himself. You never know. All right. Um, so that takes us to Oren. <laughs> Oren? I'm just going to sit. Oren's watching the, I'm the just fun. Watching. Of it. I'm not doing All right. Anything. So Oren's watching the fun. This is why you need to develop right. a cantrip. Uh, summon popcorn. So the hut moves you closer, it's going over you. Okay. So basically, you are going to be laying here with this as it moves by to go after these guys here. I know the hell is underneath. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, he's underneath. 
All right, so it's going to peck at this confused one right here. Uh, these are all plus 38, and the blue is the bite. So it's 45, 40, and 44, which are all yet. All right, the first one is 2d8 plus 23. So that one does 7 plus 23 is 30. All right, so it's 30. 30 and 45 is 55. Nice. 55 and 29 is 84. All right, so that giant there is hurt pretty bad. He's not wow. dead. Um, he is there. He's looking very worse for the wear. I'm trying to listen to this. Ballo. Oh, he's going to sit there. And... Yes. Is there another guy still on up? the video? We're entertaining you with lollipops. Come on, Janet, do the All dance. Ballo, Ballo, Ballo. This is so perfect. For this. Thirty-two. <laughs> This is this is what Oren's thinking up there. Sunshine and lollipops as the hut kills all the giants. <laughs> Nine points of damage. But that one that killed Cal. -El. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a 50 60 song. This is just greatness though. With Cal, with Cal -El bleeding out underneath the hut, it's just sunshine and lollipops. He's not bleeding out. He's dead. What's <laughs> a negative 30? One of, one of my favorites is still safety dance. So you have the safety team. What one's that? I mean, oh, he's got 63 hits, but he's got 100. So what does that put him at? Oh, it's negative 37. <laughs> All right, so we're going to Remily. This, if, you this, haven't, if you haven't I'm heard sorry. the song, go to YouTube and watch the video of it, because the video is just... Right now? All right, so this it's one YouTube. is the plus okay. 11 from Remily. This is the plus 6. So yeah, just search for so safety dance. 22 will hit this Can guy here. Yeah. Well, you yeah. should do then chicken dance. Oh, yeah, that'd be it. better. Do chicken dance. Do, do chicken dance. 13 fat. points of damage to the, which is, <laughs> he's burning here. This guy's just been pecked away at, pen pecked on the end. Safety dance. There it is, second one. Yes. Safety dance. Safety dance. There you go. This one right there. That's so it. She will, right? yeah, she will be entertained. I promise. Uh, they have I little midget guys on there, so she'll be. be... All right, Rothar, your turn. You know this hut standing over here. It's not hurting you, but you see the legs kicking out. <laughs> okay. It even looks fantasy-ish from the move from the video. Now, again, remember, this is the quality of that era, so it's not going to be the clearest. Uh, nine more points of HP. All right. Is he awake yet? No, okay. he's, he's taking a lot. This looks so stupid. But you might get him up. He's he's still within his constitution. Another one might get him up. Okay. All right, so Greta. Oh, yes. Greta is going Josh, to go to town. that's your name. I was like, I, I, I yes, see yes, it. it. It's is. there, but I can't think of it. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> All right, so she does 28 and 22, which prone will hit him. I got one even better after this. What's that? She does 13 on this. Huh? What's that? So she does Magic dance, I 24. I think I've seen that one. 24, 24 is 48 points. All right, so I he is it. gone. Take the one that was laying down on the end. One of the many number of movies I haven't seen yet. Tongue piercing. He is gone. Eraserhead. That was the name of that movie I was trying to think of. Yeah, I remember Eraserhead. Hey, buddy. Oh, no, no, he's still trying to heal him back. To, to oh, this one's not dead? Oh, okay. He is dying, but he's kind of staunched him, where he's just negative now. All right. So, yes, he is staying. Quite stable. Good job. All right. Good question. All right. That's the confused one. Go for it. You get, uh, he's not moving, so his AC is 16. Oh, 
25. Not bad. He's hurting pretty bad. Oh, and roll for his confusion this round again. Okay. his confusion last part. And the other guy, too. Level. So that's also yeah, they're getting, they're getting close to the end. Uh, 77. Maybe uh, by the time I get the sky back away. Yeah, no, no, that's no, no, attacking that's him. Right. So 77 AF. Okay, next one. Go on this one here. This guy's also the confused. Round is on. Yeah. 50. Keep the information. Well, 55. Babble incoherent, incoherently, so he just babbled. I can save him and some of the other ones. They they may like. All right. You didn't come back with So, Damien, <laughs> your turn. <laughs> or you got the us. one babbling incoherently. You got the other one ready to hit his friend. Uh, well, the ones who aren't doing anything are eventually going to get pecked to death. So, Damien's job is done, pretty much. Yep. All right. Just, uh, that, that one all the way right there. He's still fine. Um, this one here, down mm. here, is not fine. He is bleeding, too. Oh, toss a magic he missile his way. Here. I have plenty of those. <coughs> 7, 10, 11, 11 plus 4 is 15, 15 points of damage. Giant running by is going to get hit by his friend who is in an enraged state, hitting anybody close to him. Uh, oh, here, just random. Oh yeah, all yeah. three hits. What a good sign. All right, so that's thirty. Thirty. Sixty-three. 63 and 35 is 98. Remove the giant running by to Greta. He is, he is gone. His Why? friend just goes, No, you don't. Why would you kick the front of a stalled BWS? I don't know. It's just a bad thing in life. They're musicians, not mechanics. <laughs> All right, so we got three of them left, so I got to remind the three. I get really, really, really only had like, what, two or three good songs that killed it. Well, the great thing for interacting with this three combat, three guys, with a HUD attacking, you aren't guaranteed any experience points of major value. But because you guys are participating in the combat, this is <laughs> wow, he got screwed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. <laughs> so, Oren, your turn. <laughs> the gun in the land down under. Well, That's actually where he is right now. The land down I under. Guess, the I guess. I guess last last round. I guess I would switch to my uh, crossbow since. Uh, we're going to continue to fight. Someone's this. actually going to view this. Well, actually, Cliff and Scott are going to view this with much humor afterwards of us singing this song. I have some humor considering that's that's the first death of Cal. You had three. Cal is one. So you guys are all right. Orange, gonna be orange shot at the crossbow bolt and missed. Right, the one that killed Cal. <laughs> it just flew over. Oh well. All right, I'm done. All right. So that's the hut now. The hut is now concentrating on the uninjured one down here, or the semi-injured one right here. And it's going to take its attacks. Bite being the blue. Yep. Oh, oh yeah, with the beak. Gross. Well, the, the thing is, the thing you guys notice standing on the deck is it leans over to bite. You don't slide with it. You stay planted where you are. <laughs> kind of the hut effect. Um, so... I took a trip to the future and got some gravity plates and bolt, uh, installed from Starfleet. Yeah, Good thing it didn't take a lesson out of Robotech's book. 30, 27, 57. 
Those just came right out of the ship. And 7 and 30 is 8 and 7, so I remove that one from there. He's gone. All right, so you guys are down to two very injured giants right now. All right, this Fallow. Yes. Fallow, you got two. The one that's... Oh, and I need the confusion rolls for the two of them again. Let's see what's going to happen. They're getting the rousy coming up. Um, 66. I don't know. Sixty-six. Yeah, sixty-six. Are you babbling incoherently? No, no, that's a tax cell. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. D eight. That's right. He is correct. So do a D eight plus seventeen to him. Twenty. Twenty points of damage. Ouch. He's hurting. All right. So the next one. Tax cell is always successful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it again. It says D eight plus because you're hitting yourself. That's a seven. The one that was normal babbling before is now acting normally. All right, so he's like looking around going, and all of his friends are dead. And the Oops. other one, they woke <laughs> up just in time for the see the other one attacking himself. Yes. All right, so Thalo, what are you going to do with the one that woke up? Oh, sit there and do another bolt bet, or another uh, swing bolt. Jeez, man, this is like a blast from the past, isn't it? Uh, Who can it be now, Janet? 35. I assume 35 is a hit. Yeah, so 35 is a hit. He does seven. What's that? You hit him with a rock. This is, uh, remember that awesome. hat, or, uh, I just, it's land swing down under the last one. This is who can it be now? None of these are bad language. No, no, none of these are bad plus five. Like 80s music. <laughs> Unless it's Prince, no. But he gets a plus nine. How much did he do all together, Paul? Seven. Yay. He's been chipping away. He actually has done, what, 40 points? Close to 40 I points? I don't know. I don't know. 30, 30. If he could sit there and sling something that would, like grenades that would blow up and do some serious damage, yeah, right. then it would be good. Swing out of fire. You need an alchemist, that's exactly it. Um, Remily. So Remily's going to do her little alchemist uh, fire does a lot of damage. You could sling it with a sling. Well, it does 1d6 of fire hits. damage, which I assume these things take more than fire. 6, 8, plus you can set them on 10 fire. points of damage. Yeah. That one. So he is not. I'll really remember good. that. Maybe I'll All right, it. Uh, Greta. Or actually, no, Rothar. Rothar, are you going to bring him back? Yeah, I'm going to try. All right. This might bring him back. We're going to give him a shot. Uh, yes, he is at three hit points in days, a little face. No, no. He's still confused. Yeah, oh, all well, the confusion. Oh, great. He might attack you. Uh, 45. He's babbling incoherently. Babbling incoherently at you. How many times does he have on his confusion? Uh, should be four or five by now. Two, I think it's three now. The other one, four of the other. Three more left. Yep. Uh, so Greta is going to run up to this one who's back to her and going to Shawin, the green one, the other the ones. Oh, yeah, the green one might be critically confirmed. And it does! Critical card for Greta on a bladed weapon. She's dead. It's dead. Basically, Greta cuts off its leg and it's gouts of blood flying. Yeah. Cuts off the leg, it starts falling toward her, she just aims her axe right. up and decapitates it. So, more yeah. bonus on the other one. Yeah, he's smart. He keeps his more on that. Alright, so, Painman, you got the one giant that's kind of come out of confusion that's been hit so many times it isn't even funny, and kind of look around like, what the heck? Your turn. You can try to negotiate with it if you want, or you can just keep acting away. Oh, let's try and get him to surrender. <laughs> I love it. How much do these giants weigh? Oh lord, 17 foot, probably 2 or 3 ton. They're not small. They're not going to pick one of them up easily. Not unless you got a 30 plus strength, which is giant like strength. I got clubs. <laughs> You, you could probably lift a limb pretty easily, but the whole body is going to be a feet of... You could try, but you'd have a chance of getting a hernia too. Alright. Yeah, magic will fix it. I yell at the giant to drop his axe and back away and we'll split it out. What was yours total? Well, I actually was using diplomacy that time. Alright. So I'm not All right. lying. So what's your diplomacy? 18. Nah, he kind of looks at you and shakes his head a little bit like, no, nope, we ain't doing this. So you did your one action, or are you going to attack him with your second action? Well, 
one was trying to get diplomacy and which will take one of your actions. All right, Mel will bluff him until if he doesn't drop his axe back off and surrender, I'm going to have the house rip his face off. All right, there you go. Back to the pavement, I know. 23. Uh, yeah, he fails with a 20. He just kind of looks at you and drops his axe and puts up his hands. <laughs> All right, combat is complete. Did you finish killing him off? No, I got No, he's got one to surrender. And the house stopped attacking? Or the hut stopped attacking? Well, he backed away. Oh, he backed away. He's supposed to take a step back. So. No, okay. he, is, he is backing slowly away. He's not doing great. Neither is the leader back. What about this one? He's babbling incoherently. You probably okay. could try to tie him up, or you could probably just try to bluff them. Uh, you can't tie these things up. Bring you're, you're, yeah, yeah, you're going to have a hard have time. We don't, don't have anything that's, that we can nope. put on them that will restrain them. Nope. You do We're not count him on their sense of honor since he surrendered. Well, he dropped, he did drop that and Damien said a few words and they started murdering themselves. All right. Yeah. So if someone wants to interrogate him, I'm not an expert in interrogation. But I got this. Yeah, I mean, I would, but I wouldn't. All right, so yeah. you can put them both sitting out in front of the hut, kind of cross-legged style, Indian style, if you want them to. The hut won't attack them. Yeah, if you can tell the hut not to, probably it won't. You guys do have the mantle. It will listen to you to a certain level. I never thought about that. But they were threatening before. That okay. was part of the problem. Oops, and they don't like Baba Yaga. They're, they're sinning but not in love with you guys at this point. So. Who's going to sit there and chat with them? I'm going to politely ask the hut not to uh, finish murdering these. Iso says it's okay to swing up in this fire at the uh, Now, let me got to give you guys, as, as, as this kind of quiets down, you guys get the lay of the land. Nope. Another thing there is like, another... Um, like specialized uh, uh, sling bullets that have like alchemy stuff in it. Yep. There is another thing that you guys yeah, notice. You, they sit there and they say that uh, you Around can sit the there and do like, with, like other splash weapons like holy water and stuff like way. that. Fair enough. And over like this way. Bit, is a bone fence made out of human and other kind of creature bones nice. with a gate. Where? Right around all the around the hut. All around the hut. Oh, all around the hut. And they're inside this, this fence? There's a gate at the front. I have a call I have to do with Joe. I'm not going there. So, uh, My yeah. My schedule has changed completely from my boss. I figured it has. They probably scheduled no. you. I work now tomorrow from 3 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And then Monday from 8 p.m. to 4.30 a.m. So Tuesday's off? Okay. So they moved you around so they get a full amount of time out of you. So I work 8 p.m. Monday night to 4.30 a.m. Tuesday morning. Wow. And this fire is bad. You're going to be exhausted. All right. Well, at least you don't work Monday day. All right. So um, they're looking at you. Just confused. I mean, you don't look like Bobby Yaga, first of all. Nope. And uh, so their their whole thing, you know, he's kind of sitting cross-legged over here now. This guy's gone. So they're just kind of looking at you. And, I mean, you can put Greta kind of guarding him on the one side, I guess. And then, yeah, he's up here laying down kind of dead in a doornail. Remily's flying over this way, kind of looking at him. Can somebody pick up kal <laughs> Yeah, Kellel's under the I'll hut. I'll get him. So he, yeah, the hut basically lowers itself down, so you just have to do a slight jump off of it. Okay. It doesn't crush Cal. It lifts itself up so you can go under. You can grab, drag Cal out, and then it'll come down again and sit flat. Where and am I? Then you can pull him up onto the deal. That's a good question. Uh, where are you? That's true. Where did I put you? Oh, crap. Yeah, you were there. there. I was never there. You were there. Yes, I was never go. there. Well, it's I like I didn't really do anything. Well, I, I, I just felt work better than it ever did. <laughs> it's as if you never existed. I was never there. He was were never there. Were you guys there. just assuming that he was me? Yeah, maybe. No, I don't know. I don't know. I was assuming he was somebody. You guys right. look so holier than thou. 
So the one giant speaks to you in oh, skull, kind of broken. He goes, what you do here, what you want, this our area. This not Baba Yaga's. You're right, it's not. Well, I guess that depends on who you ask. I think according to her, it would be hers. But according to you, it's not. We're just passing through. <laughs> yeah, we're not really doing well. any. You know, we're just passing through. 24. Fine. We have no quarrel with the giants. You pass through. He says, Hut does not pass through. Hut stays. Hut goes nowhere. Sounds reasonable enough. As long as you guys won't come back and try and attack it. Fine. That's unfortunately our only way off this area. He, he goes, you let us live, we, we go. We go. And basically he, he, they have long knives on them, but he drops his axe and stuff in his bag. And both of them drop bag and axe. And basically just take, take the long knife with them and whatever armor they're wearing. Hang on, hang on. Whoa, 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 guys. Can't let you go back out there. Into the wild without anything to really defend yourselves with. You got a knife, but it's not your trusty weapon. Maybe we can work something out here. Okay, what do you want to work out? <laughs> well, we find ourselves in a very strange area. And I think you guys are much more familiar with the area than we are. Yes, we know the area. We exist. would like to avoid more conflict with you and your tribe. Okay. Um, he says. If possible. Um, we're looking for, what is it that we were looking for? Cooked wood. Uh, they're not going to nullify that, though. Was it the maiden, the mother? Unless I'm sure we want to get by without tea. He looks well, cheap for a second, we'll kind of a look, and then he goes, Tosia? Might be that. Right. What is this Tosia? Tosia where carvings of women are bigger than us. Yes, that sounds right. He goes, he points this way to the north, he goes, many miles. Many miles? Many miles. He goes, you're in... He's like searching for a word. It's like his skull is very limited. I see. Can I speak to him in giant? Yes. And say, is this language better? And he growls back to him giant and goes, yes, this is my native tongue. I speak better. So any of you guys understand the giant will understand that anybody who doesn't does not. It's just like rah, 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 rah. He goes, you are in what humans call the Vesda March. Vesda March. Yes. He goes, it's it's the Vesda what's it called? He goes, the Vesda, the Vesda. He's looking for the word for a second. March, yes. He says, humans thought it la their land is not their land. It's giant land and centaur. He says, Centaur tribes, he points to the woods over there just to the left. Yeah, we he know goes, about those centaurs. things. Those are supposed to be really bad. For us, yes. For you, maybe not. Ah, yes? What can I do for you? Nothing? Okay. He goes, to north is where our Tozi is near river. He says they're haunted human ruin place off just a little bit northwest of here. But it takes you to river. Are there any human settlements along the way by any chance? Or? There's no. He says they're centaur settlement that move in hoofwood so we don't attack it. He says they call it Vernine. Vernine. Yes, your word, Vernine. And you can hear, you guys hear giant, then you hear Vernine. And you hear giant, and you hear the Vez, the marches, and then you hear some other. So you guys are listening. Pick up snippets that you think are maybe area names. He goes south is Lake. He goes south is Island of Zvartian and Durathrost, old human cyclops ruins. He goes. Um, up way north of river is Savorner. Savorner where Savorn the dragon lived. Mm -hmm. White dragon, nasty. North of uh, Artosia. He goes, there are also Tiaga giant and her clan in the area. We don't like them. We fight them. 
that help you with what you need to know? For the most part, where should we stay away from to avoid conflict with you and your people? He points directly west. He goes, my tribe. Your tribe is to the west? Yes. Are you the leader? No. No? No. There's Great Jarl that leads tribe. What is your name? He says, Urgon. Okay. He says, I am lieutenant. Okay. Tell you what. We'll heal you up. We'll give you weapons. Make sure you have food to get back to where you're going. Uh, the only thing I ask in return is that you let your... You said Jarl? Mm hmm You let your Jarl know that um, there's some humans roaming around. And we would prefer to have friendly relationships. All right. We're right here. Diplomacy. Well, that's not terribly great. No, yeah, he, is. isn't, he isn't terribly wonderful either. But yeah, that's uh, 26. So max with a natural, natural 20, so add plus 4. With a natural um, 20, you get the plus 4 bonus. All right, that'll be... 13 plus whatever your bonus is. 2 plus 14, 620. 20 and these are considered unfriendly. You've moved him to neutral. Fine. He goes, but you know come our land. He says, you cross river on other side. I cannot guarantee draw my attack. If, hypothetical here, if we needed your assistance for something or maybe had a warning that you guys might like to know about encroaching enemies, how could we get in contact with you then? He says, leave stone over the river, and he makes a symbol on the ground. Okay. He says, with this symbol, we meet you. That'll do. Um, for reasons you'll understand, I can't give you your weapons right next to the hut, because we can only... He says, fine. He we says, can't influence it that much. So Greta walks with you, dragging, I guess, their axes, and you guys go out, probably... Um, wait, wait, what's... A, what's a Paul's tenth, character? Um... Paul's character is uh, Orin. 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 Yes. Could we uh, maybe heal him up a little bit so that they can make it all the way home? I don't know. Healing them up a little bit? Yeah, you can heal everybody just up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he's just kind of... I mean, honestly, they're neutral towards you right now. Normally, they're a chaotic, evil creature, but you guys have them at... I understand. I just can't heal that many hit points. It's fine. You can heal them what you can. Okay. And then that means probably staying here for the night and getting your spells back. So it means possibility of something else coming along, but yep. it'll give you that ability to do it. All right. So anybody else hurt? Um. Nope. Other than Cal El? No, nope, <laughs> but I am hungry. So. <laughs> you guys could hunt around here. There is the woods over to the. I mean, I'm totally hungry. Yeah. Related yeah. Something. No, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Oh. Let's, let's get the so, Once we finish up these, this dealing with the giants. My so, hit point thing, it looked like I'd taken 20 points of damage at some point in time. Uh, oh, I don't know, Max, I'm guessing during good. last session. You guys are doing good with the book. By the way, right. nice 20, natural 20 on that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so yeah. 20, 28 points of, of damage to everybody who, who needs right. to be healed. Sweet. Except Cal El, who could be healed. I could heal him 28, um, but he's still yeah. dead. Yeah. All right. But he's pretty I guess, I guess as Fred is gathering their axes, I'll pick up the bags. And kind of rifle through them a little bit the to make fast, sure there's nothing. Uh, yeah. Do you know what they say to do? Right. Is they take the alchemist fire and put it in an alchemist uh, bullet. Right. Giant and then it'll bags do the same thing. Giant bags. That means yeah. that's, that's what I was thinking of. Because I know that they make like those alchemist bullets for things. Right and yeah. They 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 have have I already had some on him. He already had some on him. So I just said, got to get him an alchemist fire flask and I can fill the bullets with it. Nice. By the way, they, they got the, the, uh, swing the, the, the bullet, it'll do the D6. They got the pocket B series and pocket core rule books that are out now. It's so I don't cute, need to get so little. Them. They made them, they go. literally I made, made them. Like 20, bucks. 20, bucks. 20 bucks. So you can buy a, a 40 or 50 dollar book for 20 soda. bucks. <laughs> I However, I wasn't sure what Brian so drank, so. You know why? Because they want more so people playing the game. I got a lead, a two liter of Pepsi and a two liter of Mountain Dew. So Max, do you have one for the monster? Okay. Beast because I didn't know if you wanted to. I don't have any monster with that. Nineteen so bucks. The they got them as a mm -hmm. what they call. She was talking. Kim saw one, cool. then took a picture. It's the. Um, it's a song. Only because you guys have been giving me a lot of. Uh, it's so little. I even took a picture. Five. Do you need five ones for your five? All right. So let's see here. 
Giant bag. Yes. Bree's not doing? happy. I don't know. Why? She was hoping this one was for this one was for the Okay, yeah, that one was for you, and this is for me. And Weekend, I and now I'm confused myself. Okay. Yeah, well, good. well, it's not, right. you didn't put the schedule, remember? And if you, you need kinda... to have ones instead of fives, I have ones too. I don't normally use a cash, so this right here is probably what I'll be contributing next time. Oh, it's like all this cash is basically just from the uh, previous pizza purchases. <laughs> Why? It doesn't matter. I always get the deals, and whenever you sit there and you get the deals, none, none of the other benefits from anything else that you can do apply. Because they say, we're already giving you a deal. Percent dice away. Alright, so what do you guys want? 85. What do we get? Is, right. is two enough, or do I need three? I'm not, I'm not eating. You're not eating? No. All right, two will then be enough. I got to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning on Friday to vomit my inside. I'll eat. All right. I had, I had a wonderful case of food coming in. Yikes, that's not good. How'd you get that? I, I don't know. Something I ate did not agree with me. That's not a good thing. Not at all. All right, swirl percent again. 76. All right. Roll again. 97. All right. You've got a scroll with two, it's a wizard scroll with two spells on it. I will just write that directly to my character sheet. Uh, one is haste and one is fireball. It is level nine fireball. Okay. Uh, the ice craft is the deal. So level nine for haste and the. Okay. All right. So roll on the next one. You guys got like five more bags, or actually six, five more bags because his bag is a separate bag. I assume there's food and stuff in it, right? Oh yeah, there's well, oh, yeah, there's a hunk of horse in there, or what you might think is horse, maybe it's centaur. We don't know for sure. At this point, sadly, could be a little bit of anything. All right, so we're just gonna get two pizzas We're inside yeah. those. So bring them in the main box. box. I got. I'll look in a bag. I got that. Really? What's that? Oh, that's a nice one. All right, so that takes it to a different level. It just depends on what they got. So let's uh, roll percentile again. You did quite good on that one. That's only a 20. I don't know. All right, so that takes you to those. All right, so roll again. No, violent drugs. 93. And so 93 is, grab that book. Unfortunately, core roll book doesn't have all this in here, so i got to go to something else. i got to go grab my... What are you looking for? Game Mastery Guide for weapons and stuff. They unfortunately do not... Actually, I'm going to do this. Let's do this. This has everything in it. That is all... Now I'm going to have to get Starbucks Monday yeah, the night before guide. I'm going in. Yeah, it's actually its version of kind of getting everything back to normal. All right. Yeah, honey, unfortunately it's not going to be fun at all. All right, so let's see what the type is. There we go. All right, look for a magic weapon. Okay, order sent. Yeah. All right, so you got one of 93, you said? Yeah, on that last one. Okay, so let me do that. Very nice. All right, so this is interesting. All right, so you see what looks to be a Nodachi. Roll for the percentile on the Nodachi. This will be interesting to see what you get. Uh, four. Zero, four. It's just a simple plus one Nodachi. 
It's a plus one, no dodge. You're able to tell. I'm not going to make you guys do a lot on the spe on the spellcraft to figure it out. I mean, you guys are high enough level, you can pretty well figure a lot of things out fairly quickly. Ooh. Are there the random special qualities on it? Could shed light, or have an inscription on it, or those special qualities? Um, yeah, you can roll. Just for grades and giggles. What's an eight? Zero eight. It sheds light. All right, so it says it sheds light. So the Nodachi, when you want to command it to, will shed light. Put it to a light spell. So I'm going to look in a bag. All right, let's look in a bag. Give me a roll. Eleven. Eleven. This one, guys. Nice. Eleven. You find inside what looks to be a couple wagon wheels and some cloth. Bold, big boulder, too, and cloth. That's probably valuable. I'll appraise it. Yes, appraise the cloth. You think something from the far side of the world, because of the Nodachi, it kind of clues you that maybe they came from the same caravan? All right, next one. The writings in Romance. Ah, okay, so you find. 50 gold pieces in there, along with some just some miscellaneous rocks, shiny rocks and stuff. Shiny rocks. So the fifth one. Five. Oh, five. All right. You find inside some large, giant-sized goat cheese that they've gotten from their kind of critters. It's a large wheel of cheese. Where are we, where are we heading? A large wheel of cheese. Huh? What are we doing, though? We're checking the giant checking bag. bag. So this is the, oh. you guys have got, what, two more? Paul, you want to roll for a cent? You can. Sure. Give everybody a chance. Give everybody a chance. Yeah. 74. Nice. Oh, nice. Roll again. For me. 83. 83. I like 83. All right. So let's see. All right. So an 83. What's this where? Three puts us. I need to go up the level so I can raise Cal. I think they'll do that for you. Unfortunately, hmm? Unfortunately ain't going to do that for you. Now, now we've we soloed these guys. Me being ninth well, I'm level almost ninth level. level. Anyhow, I mean, I'm just saying I don't need that much. The ninth level will also allow me to let everyone travel faster. Right. I get, um, I'll be getting I'll communal... 3,300 overland flight? No, I won't oh. be getting that for a while. But I will be getting the Phantom right? Steed, communal Phantom oh, Steed. Oh, nice. I also gain the poison spell, since I don't need my bloodline spell, so it won't do much for me, but if anyone has a spell storing weapon, I'm sure that will be something they like. Hello. You can put poison in his bullets. Hi. Okay. Right, there's something that explodes in your oh, face. Oh, spell storing. Oh, that, that, that. Yeah, because, I mean, normally it's a touch spell, so I could oh. do it in a spell storing weapon. You don't actually All right, so Paul, yes. yeah. roll again. Another, yet another roll. You got 76. All right, you find a wand of pure serious wounds with 30 charges. Nice. Yet another wand of wound chart healing. Okay. All right. All right, so last one. I'll go with you. Wand of cure serious, you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. So 30 what the heck? Charges. I got room in my quiver. 79. 79. Good job, Max. Roll it again. Boy, everybody just kind of keeps a rolling. Yeah, well, so far I got bolts of cloth. This thing's <laughs> rolling, right. rolling, rolling, right. bolts of cloth. You said cure what? Serious? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Serious wounds, 30 charges. All right. That works out. Wow. Bad thing. All right. Roll level. again, percentile. Five, so zero, zero, zero five nice percent. Really but I got a 46, not a zero experience. Uh, 46. Ooh, nice. All right. So, roll. Plus you five. find a ring that is actually giant size, but then shrinks as soon as you touch it. Nice. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me throw it in my official quiver with all the other ones. All right, so roll, 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 roll percent. <laughs> nice. That's probably a good ring. Yeah. <coughs> What's that? It's probably a good ring. Roll high. Get us that limited wish. Yeah, <laughs> bring him back. Bring back Kal-El. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. 
Probably not with that. Uh, not with a 40. Um, there you go. You got a ring and roll your um, spellcraft to see if you can figure this out. This is interesting. Uh, that's uh, 17 on my spellcraft. No, it doesn't seem to want to be kind of like, I don't know. I get one of them just a regular appraisal. You want one of the magic users to look at it? Yeah, I'll let one of the magic users. Uh, you can try an appraisal, but the, oh, appraisal adds to it. It adds a your appraisal bonus adds to your roll. Twenty six. Oh, if I uh, and, then, and then I had a twenty three. All right, so twenty three. All right, so between you two guys, this is a ring of lesser revelation. This is a divine item attuned to a particular oracular mystery and containing a revelation associated with that mystery. While wearing the ring, an oracle has access to the revelation and may use it as a class feature. Oh, so mostly oracles. Yeah. So the lesser one contains a revelation that has no prerequisite or requisite that is sixth level or below. It's basically a 10,000 gold piece item, but unless you guys have an oracle, it's not usable to you guys. So uh, one of the fun things about use magic device is you can fool yeah. people into thinking that you're a class. That you're a class. Or at least so having this could be funny. This could be very funny as you do. So yeah, you can fool it into thinking uh, into having the magic item <laughs> think that you have uh, oh, mysteries right. or and then the, the last class item. feature that oracles would have that would activate this item. Well, I might try it at some point. I can always. I might wait till I bumped oh, my. Uh, I bumped my. Uh, oh, you're kidding me. All right, so Tell the feet of these the monsters. All right, <laughs> so for the diplomacy folks that use diplomacy and diplomatic things in the beginning, you guys get 200 experience points just outright, so you and you, 200. For the use of your spells, you get 250 on that um, for those confusion spells and what you get on those, because those were just very helpful at the end of the day. Sorry, Paul, on that one. It's... I'm trying to think what you, you didn't do a lot on that one. Actually. I did nothing. I shot You sat and back missed. and shot. And missed. But you will get experience because you shot. I did shoot. It's, it's amazing how that works. All right. So let's see on these guys what it's going to be worth. All right. Let's go back. Thalo shot too. He should get it. Oh, no, no. Yeah, well, Thalo will. Oh, absolutely. Anybody that had a shot, including Scott, who is dead on a doornail, which... Unfortunately, it's not going to help him until he comes back from being deader than the doornail. Oh, but he gets he gets experience. Oh, oh cool. yeah, he will. So then he'll go up to when he gets back. Life will be level eight. Not initially. Hmm? Not initially. Well, I have to restore his negative level, right? You guys get for this encounter fifteen thousand two hundred experience points. How much? Fifteen thousand two hundred. You basically fought six CR eleven creatures plus a CR thirteen. All right. I'm so level nine now. Fifteen thousand what? Fifteen thousand two hundred. Oh wow! Yep. All right. Level up. I level up. Well, and that's idea. again. This is one of these odd things where you guys were helping the hut. Had you guys sat back, it'd have been like a CR six or seven. Had we you not had the, the fray, yeah, had you not had the hut, you guys probably would be dead. Right? Nah, not with the confusion. Well, maybe. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> he may not have had time to do much confusion. I think I'm going to be multi class is a mystic now. It's an oracle now. <laughs> I'm at, now that I have a ring. You could. I mean, oracle's one. You could, you could actually Now that I have a ring now. Yeah. All right, I'll make sure that the, the two giants, you know, they have their weapons, enough food to get them back okay. to their camp. They surprisingly do not attack you. They they kind of walk like two beaten puppies back towards See, their. I, can die. I, 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 I wouldn't reason. imagine they would. Yeah, regret it. Yes, because they're giants. Well, they aren't healed up. Yeah, they aren't stupid. Seven, they're opportunistic, eight. but at the same time, okay. they know when they've been beat. They gave us their word. Yeah, the word of a giant. That's not. It doesn't hold. No, the thing that holds them is the fact that the hut isn't too far away. The hut basically ripped apart. Yeah. Uh, the leader got hit by the hut, so he knows. I'm, I'm very disappointed in Greta right now. All right, she's like, hey, I'm sorry, but it presented itself, and I'm a combating type of person. So she goes, I, I believe in letting you have your diplomacy, but the giants were trying to kill the hut. That Ooh. Was fine. No, I don't think. But it's still fun. Like it doesn't even look like it has any damage. 
I can I can bring him back with Breath of Life since he hasn't been dead that long. Can you really? Yeah. What's the penalties with Breath of Life? Negative ten, negative level that lasts for one day. Okay, so he is negative a level for one day. All right. All right. Any other effects? Oh, do me a favor. Yes. Expanded Arcana. Roll me a um. Roll me percent. Do a poll. Roll percent. Yeah. I want to make sure. You want me to do it? I can do it. You can do it if you want to. It's up to you. Everyone's this spell. Oh, wait, if the creature's hit point total is at negative amount right. greater than Again. its constitution store, the creature remains dead. No, I can't bring him back to life with Breath of Life. I have to do raise dead. But I, I can get raised dead now. I gained a wisdom. Alright, I can I can do that. My level nine feet is Expanded archive. All right, so roll whoever wants to the percentage on this. For what? For what happens to him when he comes back to this oh, okay. it's, it's not a full-on resurrection. Resurrection. This, this is just raised dead. You can, it, and he yes. has been, he's been dead less than nine days. Roll so for me this him. thing, and then part of it's the reasoning. There, there is an. Wait, do we have the material component for it? I do. All right. All right, so I have, have five thousand gold pieces worth of diamond dust, but that exhausted. I can't use it for restoration spells now. All right. So, so what yes. percent did you roll? Uh, Seventy-eight. All right. This could be fun. Roll me two six-sided dice, somebody. I'll let Paul roll it. Okay. He's the one doing the resin. Six and four. All right, so Sorry. 10 days. 10 days? It's right down 10 days for you. 10 days for what? The afflicted character gets a plus 2 on saving throws against charm effects, but takes minus 2 on bluff, diplomacy, and sense motive. Oh, he didn't use any of those anyways. Yeah. So Cal L, bluffer? And, yeah, that's going to work. And, 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 I'm and. and you, my friend, of the bluffer, yes. not Cal L. <laughs> well, he's. Cal L is convinced that the world or society are conspiring to his ruin. Hang on, let me put really? this. After one he's, death? He's a After little bit one death, you think that? He's a little bit fidgety, argumentative, sullen, or introverted. He's a little bit argumentative. All right, so more so. <laughs> how, how do you guys do this? I think our campaign just got a little bit more horror in it. There there is really yes. Well, there by the type of spell he's using. Because it's not like, in my mind, a full-on raised dead and where you guys are in this realm and all the different things surrounding this thing with the witches and everything else. Yeah. You fortunately had a goddess with you, each, or a god with you each time that kind of stepped you in the way. This one, that's why I said roll percent, because had he rolled anything lower than what he rolled, nothing happens. But because of how high that was rolled on that one roll, yeah. it opened the door. Really, oh. really, one death, and you think the world's out to kill you? Oh my god. Yes, he thinks the world's oh my he's god. already a little more paranoid. Whoa, it is Kal El. Whoa, <laughs> is Kal El. Someone got a drink of the differently colored. <laughs> so you say he gets well, minus two on well, bluff? What else? What's funny on this, and, and I'm going to say this again, and, and again, Scott, you're going to get a, a little bit buffy with me on this one. I warned you, this is kind of the feeling with Kal El. So. Understand you're getting to hear what you normally don't get to hear when you're not here. So. <laughs> well, I'd have said that even if he was here. I know you well, you yes. have, and he ignores it. Oh. <laughs> I, I have told him that kind of Cal L is the brunt of the jokes in this group because G. Cal L was like now the Cal last. Cal L gets two attacks. Cal L was like the last Azamar, and the Azamar before him. Am I wrong, Max? And the no. Azamar before him. So it's oh, kind of a cookie cutter. <laughs> So, uh, he's just not getting two attacks? Okay. Yes. What? Well, if, when you're at three quarters, the base of the attack bonus Oh, he's only got a three quarters for him. Yes. You get the second attack bonus. Yeah. The, the, the right type that his, uh, that, uh, that But Cal L is, is like alive, and Cal L is negative one level for one day, and then for ten days he has the paranoia. 
Yes. Okay. What time did you guys fall on Monday? One level two and one level three. Okay, so, how many spikes of ice you know, did you set up and how else are you? Which means you're going to somehow have to do that. I take care of this one every day. You're not here with Tom. Uh, no, right. honey, I'm going to yeah. have to and be asleep you know. by like 11.30 and be able to get up by like 5. Shut the door back. And I will deal with her potty and everything else. I'm fine. She'll be fine. Right, Janet? Yeah. Yeah. See? It's all good. Just the same. She's just the same, Mom. I just leave that word out. Maybe they're hungry. I actually yeah. got over to Max and went, so how many icicles can you set up in Kyle L's room while he's sleeping? God, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scott, you know what? It's going to be so fun when Scott surprises you guys and plays something that is totally non combative You guys won't know what to do. <laughs> It'll be like, wait a minute. He's not killing it. He's not running out of along the battle. All right. So you guys basically take the night. Let's Ooh, see. I'm going to cast that one because he wants that one. All right. I don't know why he doesn't the other that thing that before. you guys find in the in the things from these guys is you guys find that they all have um, there there are four plus one great axes. Throw it in the money bin. Mm -hmm. The armor that's that's crashed is is chain, but it is masterwork. And then the other Who's item keeping on track these of that? guys. I got it. You got it? Okay, because because I'm, I'm dealing with kal -El right now. So the other one, thing that you see here is he, there he is a, a bobble that is in the leader's bag that you guys saw on the way out that you got. It looks like a, almost like a robe of sorts. Can you do with distance? Well, that's a good question. Hey, uh, it, 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 it is magical? a globe. With what looks to be um, tiny white crystals hung, hanging suspended in a clear fluid, and it contains a miniature leafless tree in snow covering covered snow covered landscape around it. So, hey, Damien, is this magical? Uh, what am I looking at? Just a ah, snow a snow globe with icicles hanging inside and a what looks to be a barren tree in a winter scene. Okay, well, <coughs> uh, 28 on my spellcraft to figure out what right. it is. If you shake the globe, which is a move action, mm -hmm. it will activate it and cause the crystals inside to fly wildly about in the globe, taking on the appearance of a mad snowstorm for 1d6 minutes as they settle back down. Shattering an activated globe creates a raging blizzard condition for a two-mile radius center in the location where Ooh. the globe was shattered. In this area, temperatures drop below freezing, winds blow at over 50 miles an hour, and heavy snow falls. It takes 10 minutes for the blizzard to form, and the conditions last for an hour before dissipating, at which time normal weather conditions in the area of return. Once shattered, it the globe of blizzards is destroyed. So shaking it does nothing bad. It just gets it stirred up. But once you break it, which okay. it has a hardness. Because as Jamie is sitting there doing that, I'm going, Ooh! Yeah. And you see a snowstorm swirling up inside. And Damien's like, if you shatter it, I'm like, oh, oh, we're just gonna stick that in the bag of holding. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's, it's somewhere valued somewhere around 4,600 gold, but it, it has that control weather where it will set a whole a full-on blizzard for an hour. It takes 10 minutes to ramp up, but the blizzard will occur. It's a nice little bobble. Most of the items, now the inscriptions on it are in a foreign tongue. What uh, do you guys understand language-wise? Uh, everything plus linguistics, pretty much. <laughs> everything plus. Common, Kellish, Nikhil, Draconic, Skull, Sylvan, Dwarven, Giant, Infernal, Undercommon, plus one additional language for leveling up. All right, which additional language? I don't know yet. I'll, I'll mess that. But here. There's none of those already. Yeah. Does a 16 tell me what it is? On linguistics? You think so. Your, your sword has a similar carving into it. Hmm. And it looks like it's from the same part of the world, just like the Naganata does. Basically, part of the backstory that wasn't thrown into your guy is that some people from Tian Xia came over and forged some of the weapons, one of which being the blade that you have. 
And so you think maybe somewhere in that part of the world. You don't know which of the many languages from there, because Tian's got so many different. There's Tian Sing, Tian Ma, gotcha. and, and all these other languages. There's like nine of them. But you think it's from there, and, and you think it has to be within there. And you think that maybe all these items, including the bolt, which has similar, similar symbols carved on the wooden part of where the bolt of cloth is rolled up from axis, and some of the other items, even on the Naganada, the symbol for the light is the same kind of, it's a similar symbol. It's a kanji yeah. symbol of sorts. So, that's going to be the next language I look into. You're figuring this where the caravan, that you figured that these probably were taken from a caravan that was over in this area. Right. And, and does anybody got geography? Knowledge geography? Uh, oh, of course. Does. Thalo. Okay, so roll Thalo. Thalo could probably Thalo has you. knowledge everything. Thalo could probably tell you what language that yeah, is. Yeah, he too. probably could with the knowledge. He has, he has a plus 11 on linguistics. All right, so do the linguistics roll and then do the knowledge geography. 16 plus 11, so that's yeah, 27. Yeah, he, he says that's Tian Sing from over on that side of the realm. Okay, oh, well, that'll be the next language I'll study then. So he says most likely this is a Tian Sing caravan and then roll for knowledge geography. Uh, Fifteen. Iberia is a ways from the crown of the world, but most likely the caravans, which like they normally do, come over the crown of the world and make their way down. We're in Iberia. Iberia. Yeah, he knows that for sure. Oh, yeah. Here are the Vesla yeah. yeah. marches. The Vesla marches. Yes, our Iberia. If this was the whole thing, yeah, this. Yeah, I've looked at the Valerian map. I kind of know. I kind of know where Iberia is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like. Arisian is like on the, the left, and it's like kind of go halfway across, and there's kind of like Oberia, but it's it's still another northern realm. It is. It's so we went from Arisian all the way over to Iberia. <laughs> you basically traveled over a thousand miles. That's, that's, what, that's what the hunt does. Yeah, it's hard to say a thousand miles. And hey, Paul. what you do know is that the yes. eastern Pizza part of Iberia. Oh, has a lot of ruins and where most of the populated right. cities and most of the cities grew up around these ruins. I just saw him. He Over almost on this missed the side apartment. Is less popular. It's more barren, it's more isolated, and there are more monsters out right. on this side. The, the centaurs are here because there's less humans. But you guys, um, do we a roll for survival? This is kind of your tracker skill. You got survival. Anybody? Anybody? I got a 13. Nope. That won't do it for you. Kind of like maybe I noticed something. Uh, 22. 22. You notice what look to be hoof prints that are outside of the huts area, but they they ride through. It looks like sets of maybe seven or eight of them. They're ridden by here at some point. So are they shod hooves? Yes. Or? Yeah. Like civilization. Pizza. All right. So pizza break. Oh, there it is. Already said two. Okay, if you didn't put the apartment number, then there's gonna be an issue. Well, no, it's like I've done this right. before, but yes, there it is. Come forth, guys. Grab pizza. Watch out for dragons on the floor. This is oh, what this is spell level. Spell level. He's one of the best levels I've painted in a while. Thank you. Pizza. Oh. If we get to say thank you. Do you think Scott will shoot us? <laughs> <laughs> my, my bloodline power that I've gained uh, basically oh, lets me on a round by round basis get improved invisibility. I am stealthier, but I am bluffier. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, knew, bluff yourself I knew what you put in for that, Jeff. Right. Probably was the you one You do not that see me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sneaking. Jeff, say anything about this. Hmm. Okay. No, and that's why she's mad, but there's nothing she can say. She can just get and then I it. was asking questions, which is making her even madder, and it's mm -hmm. like, I'm not trying to be, she's like, I'm not trying to be rude, but, you so know. you realize you're not mm -hmm. eating because you don't want anything, right? Not because of any other thing, right? Now, well, once you've had the no, ducks like, and the bobbins, you don't really want to go back and play there again for a while. Well, oh, because it says you don't have any money to pay. Oh, no, 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 no. So, so it's green 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 yeah, 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 no. Yeah, no. Sure. Okay. I appreciate it. I'm uh, just curious, just making sure. Okay. 
Yeah. Brenda is chum chummy with you. Uh -huh. just, she still has her own. Right. No, no, no. I understand. A little bit of wild streak to her. Yeah, yeah, I guess you were right. It stayed long enough to where I didn't have to worry about it coming to out. To show her the way out of. Cause so far. So. Well, that was his. What basically I'm trying and, and convince her of is that. Uh, killing it just for the sake of blood sports and killing. Hey, I warned them. It's wrong. So he's but taking caution. Right, that's why it's going to take some time. <laughs> killing I've killing in self-defense, yeah, that's a different yeah, story. And then, one. you know, you don't want to jump into killing well, until, until you have to. <laughs> until you pretty much have to. Right you know, that that should never be your first response. It needs to be, you know.